Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another live stream with me, 320 Sim Pilot. Great to see you all. We are here in the fantastic, the beautiful, the wonderful Boeing 787. This time, the 800, the first, or sorry, it's not an 800, is it? It's a Stash 8, 7878. First time we've flown it on the channel. This is the Kuro Freeware mod for the Asobo 787, and it's very, very good. It's it's just like having the horizon, you know, it, it's just really super. We're going to take this for a spin. We're going to fly from here at Gatwick. Of course, we're in the JMC livery. Uh, it's been a long time since I've been able to fly a 90s livery on the channel, except I say that it was actually my very last stream as well. But even so, we had to get this JMC livery out into the air. And yeah, what a great livery it is. So we're going to take it from here in Gatwick down to Palma de Mallorca, of course. It just is a, a classic route we can't avoid it it's a route that jmc may well be doing if they had still existed today and if they'd taken on some 787s like uh, two eventually did so yeah glorious it's a breezy day we're on live weather you can see busy over at gatwick lots of easyjets heading out into the uh, into the wind strong southerly winds today it's been causing uh, a bit of disruption around aviation in the uk today but uh, nothing the 787 can't handle although we'll see how well <laughs> we do uh, i haven't actually tried the kuro in much crosswind yet so we'll see how it how it behaves on the takeoff and then we'll head down to palma not too far to go nice length though chance to chat and uh, talk about recent events and videos and flight sim and so on uh, yeah, so here we are. The airplane is powered on uh, as it would be. You don't depower the 787 if you can avoid it. It's The Airbus didn't like it. The 787 actively despises it. It needs to have power as long as as much as possible. Um, although there was a directive, as I'm sure you've all heard about by now, about having to recycle the flight computers. But anyway, uh, aside from that, it does not like being depowered. So yeah, this livery is free on flightsim.to. This comes from Paddy, of course, who's responsible for most of the JMC liveries uh, on flightsim.to. And yeah, it's fantastic. I actually think it is better than you would have expected for it to be on the 78. It was almost like it was uh, an early design for the 78 <laughs> livery because back at the the days of the JMC livery, we had lots of straight lines and so on, which, which I really like. But um, when the 787 came in, all the airlines started putting swooshy lines on their aeroplanes. So uh, TUI moved to a, a, a wavy livery and so on, and United have done it as well, or Continental at the time. Um, so yeah, it's it, it's JMC already had this sort of this swoop and then this swoop at the back as well. So I think it's uh, yeah really nice, works works really nicely. I absolutely love this livery. Don't know why, just really smart. Reminds me. Of growing up as well i'm sure but there we go the dash 8 variant um let's talk about that but actually before we do that i'm just going to say hello and then we'll talk about what the dash 8 is so mr cyclone good to see you steph as well thanks for coming along peter dr richard v richard v being one of the very 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 first uh, followers of the channel back four years ago now which is utterly ridiculous i cannot believe it's been four years but hello to you richard v i hope you're doing very well thank you for coming along today and it's great to see you here crash ed as well good to have you here uh, ed george lots of long-term followers here really great to see you uh george says might fly along i'm sure you'll have time to get booted up in the sim <laughs> we've never got in the air quickly and we're at gatwick which is our famously slow departure point santiago Perez, good to see you as well mike bakey um i hope you're doing very well yes indeed it could be breezy on your landing in the phoenix <laughs> uh lorenzo from Saudi Arabia, good to see Lorenzo and Josh Illini from Fiji Islands. Oh, fantastic. Wow, what I'd give to be in Fiji. Fantastic to see you. Thanks for coming along. Um, we've got Wired Womble, Captain Wazza. Captain Wazza says, uh, would have flown along on Vatsim, but uh, have to go to work. Enjoy that. I hope it goes well. We'll see you again next time. Thanks for coming along and saying hello, Captain Wazza. Uh, Wired Womble, thanks for coming along and moderating as well, along with Richard V. Uh, the route is in the chat. It's pinned. Like I say, Gatwick to Palmer. Paddy, great to see you. Paddy made this beautiful livery. So thank you, Paddy, for coming along. Paddy's responsible for a lot of the liveries, if not the vast majority that we use on the channel. And uh, we've got Ash and Redstone Pilot. See if you're not available. Yeah, maybe the VR is out of service. Yeah, it could be. Uh, and yeah, it will be a bit breezy. I see Big Jet TV alive, of course. Yes. <laughs> uh, Hayden, good to see you. Hayden, thanks for coming along. I hope you're doing very well. Great to have you here. And uh, I hope you're having a good time. Four Prawns, good to see you as well. Epulet, Tony, Tamango, Nick, Obi and uh we've got loads of people 320 sim super fan thanks for coming along i'm going to uh from luton to keflavik with easy tomorrow i have flown to keflavik lovely airport should be a nice flight quite uh, quite a remote sort of flight for the a320 so very quiet it's nice for a short haul pilot in europe uh, the radio is usually very busy but flying to keflavik it goes nice and quiet that's all hello to you thanks for coming along lauren v thanks for coming as well I'm moderating lauren v says the dc10 wore this livery even surprisingly indeed it did yes so that's the sort of airplane i'd imagine you'd replace with a 787-8 like like i say like two did although a bit smaller than the dc10 that was some serious heavy metal um yeah so there we go uh 
Epilette says, love when your streams coincide with long journeys. Excellent. I hope it has. <laughs> and Billy says, hello. Hello to you. Uh, yep. Yeah, questions in the cruise. Thank you, Lorenzo. Uh, appreciate those. This 787-8 is from Kuro. It's on flightsim.to, Jamie. Highly recommend it. Highly, highly recommend it. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, and Adrian says, good afternoon from North Carolina. First time watching. Thanks for coming along, Adrian. Great to see you here. I hope you're doing very well. Right, A320 when, Captain? So, ask at all. Well, A320 was my last stream. Um, it is not in my next two videos. But there's some good news for you. Uh, if you're watching this, I have finally got the 787 Descent tutorial ready to go. So that is coming very soon. We also are going to take a look at the 146 Professional Version 2 update. I've got access to that. So that is uh, also coming soon. So yeah, quite a lot of content coming by comparison to the normal. Oh, lovely landing there. Very nice. That looked great. Is that this new VATSIM high resolution thing? That was really nice. Great to see. Anyway, 787-8. Yeah, no speed tape on this one indeed, Zermango. Uh, indeed, indeed. Um, yeah, this is the shortest version. It's the original Boeing 787. It's fallen into that trap of being the smallest and therefore now relatively underused you don't actually see already that many of these rounds they, they weren't as popular as the dash 9 which of course just holds more seats and doesn't really burn any more fuel so why wouldn't you use that one more um, but these are around they are the original it tends to look a little bit stocky uh, but it's grown on me a lot if you go above it you'll see that the wings are absolutely massive for the size of airplane look at that it is a beautiful machine it's like a big bird the wings are the same wingspan as a 777 effectively so they are huge great wings and this is just a small fuselage you could tell it was they were thinking about the bigger airplane sometimes you get stretched versions of airplanes where they clearly have just stretched it without that being the original plan but this is clearly a sh almost a shortened version well that's what i feel like anyway uh, but i think it looks quite nice it's grown on me a lot and uh, yeah it's it's just the original one it's also nice because when you have such big wings on an airplane you get a lot of performance margin especially at the high altitudes so this airplane you know unless it's seriously heavy you'll go straight up to flight level 380 400 and even this plane can go up to flight level 430 and if you're light enough even on a long flight you could do that really early on it's it's surprising so yeah there are perks of those nice beautiful big wings and uh, getting up high and above the weather above the turbulence above all the other traffic can be a really good thing especially if you're going over the ocean Right, uh, let's have a look. PTDR says, Thanks for your compliments, Captain. You are my number one real life pilot with streams. I always watch a live, and as I already told you, you're the best instructor here on YouTube. That's very kind, Peter. Really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. And thanks for coming along today. Uh, <laughs> Lauren P says, If I knew you mean well over a year ago, that's in velocity, increase the refresh rate from 1, 5 hertz to 5 hertz. Wow. So, yeah, big increase. That explains it. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, I do mean that. Whoops. Epilet says, do you fly all variants or do you only fly one like A320-21? Uh, as with all these airplanes, you can fly all the variants on the same license. So you can fly the 777-200 and 300, you can fly the 787-8-9-10, and you can fly the A320-19-21-18, all in the same license. Um, yeah, so absolutely, you can fly all of them. It's the size of A330, but airline that still fits 333 seats instead of 242, unfortunately, says Tamango. Indeed, uh, this is a... Um, yeah, this is not as wide as an A350. Yeah, this is a, a slightly smaller sort of category. I wonder if Boeing regret that now. I wonder if they wish they could have made it the same width as a 777. I mean, why wouldn't you? If you're going to make a new airplane composite and all the efficiencies and so on. But I suspect, you know, the reason they didn't they didn't make a huge airplane to compete with the A350, right? They made the 747-8. But uh, I am totally speculating here, by the way. So I, I, I will say now this is just my opinion on, on aviation. <laughs> um, but why they, they didn't go for the huge seat numbers they went for a point-to-point -point efficient aircraft so maybe that's why you'd go with the nine the 333 seating rather than 242 um but yeah also sorry 242 would be only eight across wouldn't it but anyway it's 333 that's the way it is I, but i see what you mean if you, it'd be nice if they could have two at the window seats like on the top of a 380 or something which is 242 but there we go that's what we get right let's have a look uh, inside like i say it is powered on and we'll get everything loaded up. Actually, when I, I do want to check is that I have my... I do like this livery. I think Paddy's done a great job bringing it over. Sort of helps hide the stockiness of the airplane. Just about. Yeah, really nice. Smart. Very smart. Let us jump into the flight deck. So, our airplane is not cold and dark, but this is about as cold and dark as you'll see it. So, we'll just initialize the EFB. 
then we get in, check the usual thing. So it is down, we've got hydraulic quantity and we have engine oil. And, and by the way, isn't it great that the oil quantity just shows? All the other things are turned off while the engines are depowered, but the oil quantity shows. The 320 Neos don't do that, unbelievably. Unbelievably. This is not the headwind, this is the Kuro 787-8. Um, right, so yeah, plenty of questions to come um, in the cruise. Uh, so yeah, anyway, uh, what was I doing? So oil quantity, um, we've got oxygen quantity, and we are going to come up here and turn on the IRSs on and on just the two amazingly and that's it that's all you have to do this airplane is incredibly self-sufficient uh, and then we are going to check other things around the flight deck like the documents and so on but they all uh, we would assume are fine uh, and what i will do is go to index settings and i don't know if i've done my i have not done my vatsim user id so i'm going to do that so we can load in the route in the proper lazy pilot way um, which is of course what we always want to do if i can just find your account your account your account there we go your account settings use id and we'll type it in i've done this many times on stream so i can only apologize for doing it again three zero six nobody look please <laughs> there we go right we'll put that back on the ida page where it was good so yeah then we can just test our oxygen mask. It works just fine. <laughs> there you go. The IRS is pretty quick to bring up the, the first stage of the alignment. Um, and your shooting description is still talking about the Phoenix 820. Ah, yes. That is a big oversight from me. Apologies. Let me change that. done thank you good spot um right so that's that's sort of the very basics the airplane was powered up we need to get the irs's on check that we have oil oxygen and hydraulic quantity uh, and then check the check the database and so on and that's all done so what i'm going to do now is just head into the cdu and get that set up so first of all we'll go index settings weight and balance and actually we won't do that first let's do the other bits first to make sure it has loaded in the correct weights and so on so you check your database this is actually expired but i need to update my sim so apologies for that we're going to start from gatwick position makes sense gps position matches and then we're going to go to root and request that route i've got to say it's so nice being able to just click around on these i wish the the uh, the real airplane was touchscreen like this it'd be so so much smoother to use Departure time will probably be in about half an hour. Hopefully, we'll push back. Yeah, the reason the um, the description's the same is not it's not because I copy paste the whole thing, but it's because the um, the way YouTube does it when you stream is that it will automatically reuse your previous stream everything, which is great until you forget to do that <laughs> right flight plan is ready to load or erase on the route page should we just load it in we can't really see it until we do some route data rejected review loaded page on the route page interesting interesting let's have a look next page so i'm just going to check this route with the flight plan we have which is what i've sent you all so Seaford, Yankee 47 to Drake, and then we're going to take Lima 151, Sitet, up on the member 859, Sopil, direct to Balan, direct to FPOC. And this is what you would do every flight. You load it in, but you always check it, obviously. Narak, Gaiac, Lombra, Rokan. It's all direct through France now, isn't it? Ibrap. And then there should be a last stage, number 13 to Loris. So we'll just do the arrival at the end. So that looks pretty reasonable. Um, so I'll execute that. Go back to our route page should go back there i think when you press root but anyway uh, we're not too worried about the runway for now good so that's all loaded in so now i'm just going to go into index settings weight and balance set from ofp so we got seven and a half tons of cargo 300 passengers out of 214 <laughs> yeah i'm not quite sure what's happened there because there's a zero fuel weight of 152 tons well that's fine and a fuel of 15.2 tons that's what i expected we're going to go with uh 
just a splash extra the reason is if we look at the weather for where we're going it's actually quite breezy so i take another go so i'm going to take 1800 up on that which will put us at 15.2 becomes 16 so 17 go to take a look at this side i forget they're independent it's a very good feature 17 tons of fuel that gives us a cg actual of 27.05 good so that's done there's our fuel 17 tons i really like this system they've got it's such such a great i always talk about how good this airplane is in the sim but it is fantastic good there's the route done and checked then we're going to go to departure arrival we're taking off from runway almost certainly 26 left as we can see them doing out there we're not doing a hud takeoff uh, and we're heading out via seaford now that's why somebody said that seaford is an operative yes now there's no reason we can't do it ourselves using RNAV, some airports and operations are a little fussier about that than others because this is an RNAV departure. It happens to go via the Seaford VOR. Um, let's see. Normally available between... So overnight is the one X-ray. So otherwise... Oh, I see. So Bogner one X-ray or Hardy one X-ray will be issued. So we need to speak to our traffic control to find that out. Okay. Well, we won't put that in yet. Uh, let's let's think let's stop there get our clearance and then we can have a better idea and that's often a good thing to do in the real world as well we'll often stop and um just speak to our traffic control because you can end up guessing so much so much some route data rejected yet yeah, we know we've checked okay good right someone's off to do the walk around let's get to the overhead panel so we need to have the battery on i'm going to start up the apu so it's ready to go generators are on that's absolutely fine See bus signs, we're fueled up so they can go on. Lights are off, pumps off, primary pumps are on. Ram air turbine is not deployed. Window heats are all on. Flight door power and emergency lights armed as we're boarding. Ground test in norm. Cargo fire, don't press anything. Don't change the EEC mode. Leave the engine starts in norm. Make sure that we're not, we haven't pulled this switch. Fuel pumps can all be off. The pressure lights out because the APU is running. Also for all the engine anti-ice. Nav lights only, it's daylight, so leave all the other lights off. And coming over here, HUD, yep, yeah, landing, make sure it's pushed in. Packs, I'm going to leave off for now until the APU's up and running. And cargo, it can actually be off, it is off, uh, but there we go. Deploy the HUDs, you can have them down now really, anytime. Let's get some lights on so it's a bit brighter for you all. Now how's the sound? Can you hear any background noise at all? If you can't, let me know and I'll up the desktop audio. It's always a, a fine balance when you we've got air traffic control as well. Jamie says, I remember when I flew, well, I went to Parma. I'm not sure if it is a very busy airport, but we were held in the sky for around 40 minutes before we could land. The weather was quite nice. Any idea why we were held? It's busy. Parma is a very busy airport. That's that's pretty much it. Sometimes as well, you can find different traffic gets different priority to Parma. That's all I'll say on that. <laughs> when would you start the APU on the 320 and 787 respectively? Are there any exceptions? Basically, when you start getting passengers coming on board, you want to start getting air through. So if there's no ground air plugged in, somewhere around there, I'm particularly keen to have the APU on on the 787 for the reasons I mentioned earlier, which is I don't like the idea of the ground power dropping out. Ground power can be a little unreliable. If it fails and you'll set up the airplane, it's just a lot of problems. <laughs> so yeah, I would have the APU on about boarding time. It would be not great to have the airplane fail, or sorry, the ground power fail whilst everyone's boarding and then have all the stress of resetting it with everyone on board and so on. You know, you can just avoid that that threat, as it were. Good. Moving down, we'll make sure we set the Q&H, which is nice and low. 978 hectopascals. There is effectively a storm in the UK at the moment. We'll go to hectopascals. Uh, and there we go. We're aligning so we can turn on those flight directors. We'll leave the MCP to set up until uh, a moment from now. Let's get the lighting on it. Turned on, though. There we go. Now you can see it. Good. Moving down on the Q&H. Gears down. Auto brakes can go to RTO. Uh, and then we're also going to go to checklists. Resets. Reset all. And we would also go in and activate some of the, uh, the A cars and that sort of systems. But we don't have that today. Speed brake is disarmed. Throttles are working but they are idle and flaps are up. Master switches are off. Uh, and parking brake is on. Alternate trim not running. Flaps are not in the alternate mode. That shouldn't be lit and off. And then we've got the radio down here set correctly fine good stuff good stuff good stuff right 
like I say, you've, I've got the 146 video coming soon where I do a full flight with it and you'll see how complex airliners used to be, <laughs> which I'm sure a lot of you know. Okay, so let's have a quick look in the chat. How fast could you get the 787 in the air disregarding checklists and such? Uh, I don't know. I've thought about doing a video on that, actually. The Q400 would be the quickest out of the airplanes I've flown. The A320 would be quick because I know it very well. Um, 787 would be a bit slower, I think. Hmm. maybe not maybe the same as a 320 how fast that is well the irs is aligned relatively quickly that's usually the limiting factor you can't move until they're aligned so uh if you really want to get it in the air you know you could just go with the artificial horizon right but you really want your nav systems up and running so that depends on how far you are from the equator but i would say once that's aligned you, you only need five minutes from that point to get the engine started as long as the apu is up and running which would happen whilst you're aligning Hopefully the Majestic Q400 finds its way to Microsoft Flight Simulator soon. Totally agree. Can you do auto-align with the 787? Yes, it does. You put it into a line, and that's all you need to do. Uh, and you can actually realign it in flight in, to a certain extent. It's very clever. Very good system. Very good nav system. Right, we need to speak to air traffic control. Oh, well, I did ask about the sound, so let me just scroll through the chat. Uh, and if you are enjoying, thanks, Ephilet. If you are enjoying, do please leave a like. It makes a big, big difference, of course, as you all know. Sorry, I missed quite a lot. Ba, ba, ba. Probably upset about nav data cycles, says Lauren B. Indeed, yes, yeah. Do you think you'd ever fly a 350? I would like to have a go on the 350. Adam, indeed, why not? Why not? Uh, are you using the auto start on both engines in real life on the 78? Yes. You can auto start both engines. And you do that at the same time. GPS spoofing we'll talk about in a little bit. We can talk about that in the cruise. Uh, yeah, that's a good, good big topic at the moment. It's uh, it's made it into the mainstream. Used to be uh, very... <laughs> it's been around for longer than I think people realise, but uh, it's become, become quite uh, quite well known. Let's tune our radio. So we have to get the ATIS. Gatwick, always busy. Has Information Charlie. We are JMC346. Information Charlie. Using 2.6 left to take off. Wind 190. Oof at 19 nice and breezy gusting to 32 wow that's is going to be uh, interesting temperature is 11 so no anti-ice required qnh 978 great stuff right that's the atis ground is 121 805 and swap uh, now i did have my moby flight running let me just see if i can get that to wake up Do, do, do. Yes, excellent. That's good news for me. <laughs> Very happy about that. Uh, that means I've got my little FCU to fly the 7-8 with, which really makes a big difference um, when trying to do the heading bug update, certainly. Coming ground, good afternoon. Speed, uh, sorry, Griffin, H2 Bravo. Hey, just don't forget to check the fire extinguisher as part of the cockpit prep. <laughs> I hadn't seen that before. Uh, Very good. How do you do these things? Excellent, excellent. Now this extinguisher is actually no good. You can see there the needles in the red. <laughs> so we have to go get that replaced by engineering. Let me know how that audio is, everyone. Now we've got some HC in the background. Make sure you can still still hear me. Obviously, not to suggest I'm more important, but uh, it is. Right now, often something I get wrong and that is I like it that's the 787 version of our logo <laughs> very cool it's quite a cool way of doing it quite a cool way of doing it yeah interesting because I've been wondering what to do about the logo <laughs> good let's get a clearance from air traffic control and then we'll know what we're doing then we know what to set up Ryan Air 935. Uh, I love that I can see the frequency up here, 121805. West. West. And we have the freeway Gatwick, so we're on gate 21. Gatwick, good evening. JMC 346, gate 21, 7878. And we have QNH 978, request clearance, Palmer. JMC346 cleared Palmer. This uh, you've also filed the seafront departure. Just stand by. 
Oh dear, that's my fault. That's that sim. That's uh, not that sim. Um, that's um, sim brief letting me down. <laughs> There's no EFE on this airplane. That is something that is missing. We don't have any sort of pushback features and jetty controls and so on. By the way, APU automatically, as the APU gens are on, takes over the power, so the ground power just swaps to available. We don't have to swap over ourselves. Again, one of the few things that the Boeing does automatically. Go on, they can let us out via Seaford, surely. Just this once. Yeah, anyone watching, I do apologise if I've sent you down the wrong path of the Seaford. I've that's that's terrible. I should not have let that happen. So I can only apologise <laughs> if air traffic. Yeah, I hope there's not too many of us for air traffic to be annoyed at. We're being punished now. Short taxi though. I made sure we could be too far back in the queue. American 8731, taxi, uh, right. Once we get the route in, we can then do the uh, performance, and then we're in a good place. Go ground, Griffin, Fasten, and Yankee Taxi, and Juliet. Uh, easy eight zero nine five. I've just sent you a new route if you're able to accept it. The boys he got given the Bogdan one X-ray. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just got that. Uh, happy to accept that. Uh, easy eight zero nine five. And uh, Juliet Mike Charlie three four six. Same to you. I've sent you a new route if you're able to accept. There we go. We got the new routing. Perfect. Bogdan one X-ray. Right. That's very good of them. So two six left. Departure. Pogna 1 x ray, we've done that many times. There we go, out. Which actually, we're going to skip Seaford because we're going to go, so just execute that, go through to root, next page, and they told us to go Pogna 1 x ray and not direct Seaford. Oh, he wants us to request a clearance. Well, we'll just load this in for now, then we'll request a clearance when ready. Perfect. Uh, so, Pogna Lima 612. Uh, sorry, Osprey, I missed some people there, but Osprey. Five nine six. Are you on the ground at Gatwick? Oh, don't press things yeah, twice. Are you on the ground Bogner. at Gatwick? Lima six one two. Benbow. After you at the gigs. Sorry, I, I'm struggling to hear what you're saying there. If you're not on the ground, because we're not going to advise you. Benbow. Then up Yankee four seven. Yes, I'm still on the ground. What is your stand number? I'm making a mess of this. Get rid of Seaford, thank you. Uh, I've found you now. Uh, Osprey uh, 596, you're, you haven't filed a flight plan. Upper Yankee 47. Osprey, that's um, British Ev Geek, isn't it? Benbow, Upper Yankee 47 to Drake. Gatwick ground, easy 8623, ready for push and start. Easy 8623, pushback starts approved face south. Delete that, Drake. Back approved face south. And from Drake, leave 151 to sit it. So can I just clear up that line? Drake, leave 151 to sit it. There we go. Now we have a sensible routing. So we still need to get our clearance from air traffic control. But they told us what we can expect. So that gives us the flexibility. We can put the stuff in and load up the rest of the numbers. So next is performance in it. We've got a 0 fuel weight, 152. Uh, no flight plan is filed for you. Point six. Reserves today. Griffin, Yankee, Griffin, 5 Yankee, expect stand 1-0, taxi via Juliet, hold short pattern. Do, do, do. Final reserve, two tons, okay, alternate 2.7. So that's 4.7. Uh, Griffin 9 of 3 Lima, good afternoon. Griffin 9 3 Lima, good afternoon. 4.7 reserves. One, six, We're cruising quite high today. We're going to cruise up 410. Like I say, this is a uh, one, very six, capable aeroplane. Cost an X quite fast. Cost X 93. I hope you're all in fast aeroplanes. And we'll do 2000 for the step outs.
Not that I'm expecting to step much today. Cruci G we can enter later. Actually, we'll enter it now. Uh, it's going to be 27. Good. Thrust limit. And through to takeoff. Takeoff numbers to come shortly. Let's go through to our performance calculator. Performance. Copy FMC data. It's going to then load in performance takeoff. By the way, in the real airplane, very easy to get this wrong. Um, American 8731, good evening. Uh, taxi expects on two It is very quiet. The airplane is sounding very quiet. Uh, taxi, <laughs> um, I, can, I, uh, I know what you mean. Juliet. It, uh, it should improve uh, when it gets louder. Seven. I've got to say as well, the 7878 is the uh, quietest 787. The, the, I don't know why, but the way the ventilation is done, it's very uh, quiet. American very quiet. Don't think you're fit in there we go. One. Gatwick, two six left. Can't wait to make tutorial on PMG triple seven. Says Mohammed. Yeah, looking forward to that. Yeah, looking forward to that. I am typewriter on it. Uh, we'll do wet numbers. Um, okay, it's on you. One nine zero. One two. Taxi one two. Get. Stand one two. Get. And we can use seven one seven. And this nineteen. Gas two. So we we'll just do nineteen. Temperature eleven. Two nine seven eight. Anti ice off. Flaps optimum. With a seven nine four one. Say it Vienna. Uh, it's actually windy enough to that we could go for a wind shear takeoff, but there's no reports of wind shear. It's just the, um, windy. So, one mic for so I'm going to go optimum. One, one, four, one. What you can do is to, is force it to go uh, seven, for the nine, four, one, um, direct, direct, nine, wind seven, shear version. But there we go. CG27, calculate please. Older type ratings vanish, but the triple seven and the seven eight seven share a type rating. Right, there's some numbers. It's going to be flat 5 at 170 tonnes, which is light for this aeroplane. DTO2, cell temp 51, 129, 141, 150. So you see how low the V1 is. Remember, the 787 uses as much of the runway as it can, and it's often uh, a large amount of it. It's uh, going to um, be that when it's wet, that number is just reduced like that. So that looks good to me. Send output. There it is. Accept. CG27 gives us our trim. 5.25 and let me just taxi on this page I'm going to go to the thrust limit page bring climb I'm going to go for climb 2 because that's what you'd normally use if you're taking off in takeoff 2 uh, and we don't have any reason not to today and yeah looking good 129, 141, 150 the reference speeds are lower but that's fine uh, and that means V2 of 150 can go in our window All the way down. 150. El Navi never armed. They're over there. Uh, and we're going to climb on the Bogdan 1 X ray. Let's bring up the right SID. It's our favorite SID. I think we've done this one more than any others. Uh, initially, stopping at 5,000. And then we climb to 6. So I'm going to put 6,000 in the window. Now you'll see the airplane has got V never right, out mode. One, two, That's. A good reason to recycle it. There we go. Toga Toga, Double Elnav, ground, and Vnav armed. So it's a problem with the Boeing. You don't want to have it armed accidentally in the background. So you we make sure the flight just go off Charlie after landing. Zero, very very important. The biggest differences between the triple and seven eight uh, pressurization flows, I'd assume, since the bleed air uh, is on the seven seven seven. Exactly. All these buttons are in the same place between the two. The overhead panels are almost identical. One's brown. That's about it. That's There's a departure. Let's just check it is roughly sensible because air traffic has been very kind to us. So I'm just going to move that over there. Go to plan. Then go legs. And step through. Um, just expecting a three minute delay for the uh, taxi, just so you're aware. No problem. Put data in airport on. KK S11, 4000 above. Griffin 57, Yankee 17. 20. Wait, how did you end up there? Goes from 4 to no, 5 to, on, okay. to 6. Uh, Griffin, the 5 7 Yankee taxi straight ahead. Stand and five, two. then Bogner. Looking good. Uh, Max 250 knots, which it's got, and then en route climb uh, speed. Griffin Perfect. So I go to init ref on there. I go to legs yeah, on there. Papa, uh, we have DTO2, 51 degrees, 150 knots. We're going to put runway 26. Griffin, 93 Lima, taxi stand so 16. Like 26 left. One, six, Stopping at 6,000, but we know we're going to use VNAV. So VNAV will climb seven, via. Charlie, continue taxi now. Max 220 five, knots for that first turn is a little Romeo, bit awkward. We might have to leave flap one out for that. Right. Let's just prepare zero, our departure. Romeo, we are going to have a relatively short Connect taxi out. Let's not get it wrong this time. We've done it many times from Gatwick. Kilo, November. 
may want to and then there's space. any of these options. Eight so eight. I'm going to be really eight. slow. Zulu, Alpha Nova, Alpha Sierra, any of those, we got performance. You, you'd have performance from Alpha 1 for sure. We won't go from Bravo today. Um, so we'll just take it very slow. It could even be Juliet. Uh, and then our departure, we've talked about the, the issue. It's the slow speed here and then the step climb. So we must remember to go up to 6. But the airplane should do that in VNAV mode on its own. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, right, we've got the fuel loaded. We've got the passengers on board and the doors closed. We've got the belts on. So it's uh, time to run on the pre-flight checklist. So pre-flight checklist parking brake is set, fuel control switch is cut off. They are. No, now remember, that's not, there, that's a bit of a shortened one. one. But anyway, back to the MD. 7, 9, 4, 1, I'm going to bring the engines over to my side. I just think it's a better place Passing, for them yeah, when we're doing the stream. Right, right, how busy is it getting behind us? Let's have a look. Right, behind the Level 410 indeed, the Mango. Indeed, the it, 787 has the low cabin altitude the and the humidifier, the exactly. Terminal. No trouble. 410, you'll still only have 6,000 feet cabin altitude. Because engines windmilling as we point into the wind. Love this livery, love this airplane. Right, let's uh, see uh, if we get the word of the traffic control. holding position. By the way, we'll pressurise, which will clear out some of these warnings. Uh, three minute delay due to company inbound traffic. Okay. Gabby JMC three four six on stand uh, two one seven eight eight. We have Q and H nine seven eight hexapascals request clearance Palmer. JMC three four six cleared Palmer. The Bogner one X ray departures for five six six one. Cleared to Palmer. Bogner one X ray squawk five six six one. JMC three four six, and we are ready for push start when available. JMC 346, if you're able to push back directly onto Kilo Alpha, uh, that's the intersection between uh, the uh, the weird place and uh, the stand directly behind you, then you can push back now. If not, there's going to be a short delay. Stand by. 137, request in taxi. Yeah, we can do that. At JMC 346, we can push back onto Kilo Alpha. Uh, sorry, two, two stations at one turn. Uh, I think Ryan Ryanair passing message. Because luckily that's a straight line. That's what I want to do. <laughs> More than anything. <laughs> right, let's put the squawk in. So we're in H2 Bravo, ready for push to start. Uh, two stations at once again. Griffin H2 Bravo. Uh, push back and start is approved. Uh, face east. Push the start proof base east, uh, Griffin 82, Bravo. JMC 346, we're able to push back onto Kilo Alpha. JMC 346, Roger, push back and start to the proof face south. Push to the proof facing south, JMC 346. That's really lucky because that's, that's the easiest pushback we could have had. Uh, <laughs> right, so that is good news. Now, you'd normally actually pressurize before you call it traffic control, control but up. it was good to get a word in there. That's cheating, really, when you do it attached to your clearance, but sometimes it works for you. So let's run through our pressurizing. So. Turn on the pumps, nothing actually changes, but we turn them on. Fuel pumps will turn on, no fuel in the center tank and no fuel in center message, so we won't do that, I don't think. Nope, good. So pumps, pumps, turn on the beacon. We'll do a recall, should just have four. It's warning about cabin temperature, so I'll check that in just a moment. And we'll put the transponder, which we've done the correct code for, to... Um, transponder. Good. Right, what's this extra warning? So, uh, hydraulic systems, packs, engine shutdown, TCAS is fine. Why have we got Why have we got cabin temperature? Hmm. Ah. <laughs> yeah, well, we don't have the packs on. It would not reach 60 degrees, but there we go. <laughs> now, that, of course, in the real airplane, you'd have felt it getting stuffy, and you'd have certainly had a call from the crew, but I've never... <laughs> <laughs> Never seen it reach 57 degrees. That's brilliant. Right, we better go. Oh, our traffic's going to get very upset with us. Uh, ground speed bird uh, sorry, Griffin 82 Bravo. That was there, which has pushed back. Uh, he's going to be. Master temp 24. It's a little uh, bit hot, actually. Let's lower the master temp down. Or shall we go. Uh, Usually 23 in the flight deck is very common, further. 22 in the cabin. Griffin 82 Bravo, yeah. We sit still for a long time, direction. so we like to keep so it a little bit warmer. So there you go, 22 in the cabin. So flight deck west, is 23. Uh, Perfect. Make sure you can get onto the mic intersection. Now those packs are running. Roger that, uh, we'll push this air conditioning. Be, uh, Griffin, 82 Bravo. 
Does it have the proper beacon uh, here? Was there 790 it does underneath. 790 Can't see the top one. Oh, there it is. The wrong direction. Yep. Um, brakes released. Yes. Off we go. Awesome. Uh, correct, correct, you said tail to the east. Nope, face east. Nice medium rare passengers indeed. <laughs> okay, so I read back tail It's 11 to degrees east, outside. I didn't really correct me, <laughs> don't so know I how you're going to get to 56. That it's okay. Oh, what a beauty. Oh, we're going to push out the way of these two. That we, that's why we needed to not mess around. But we're the big airplane, right? We deserve to uh, have everyone wait. Kuro have done a fantastic job. I really like this. They've got the dimensions just right, and having the proper right now, lights one, makes one, such three, a difference. Seven, go with right now, the now, engine one, start one, is actually quite quick, and because we right do now, both one, at the same seven, time, it's quite common on the 787 to wait until Correct. you're fully pushed back right now, one, one, three, um, before you bother seven, starting the engines. Point, Otherwise, you sit there with the engines one, running whilst they're still disconnecting the tractor. So what's the point in that? Right, that'll sort out the cabin temperature, and then we'll just have the four messages, which is what we're looking for. By, uh, so get rid Alpha, of those for now. And Mike. Bravo Alpha Victor five nine six. Get rid of that to the map, and then I would always turn on the VSD. We don't have that. I get rid of one of the VORs, but I'll turn data on for the departure. We'll have traffic and airport weather and terrain. We do later. If you turn on the weather radar on here, it will actually turn on in, in the airplane. Ground, There's no uh, separate panel for it. It's just easy, integrated, and you don't want to do that while you're on the ground with the ground crew around easy, the airplane. Give way to the Boeing 787 that should be pushing clear of Kilo. Taxi holding point Alpha 3, runway 26 left. We would indeed push clear of Kilo. Papa I think it's very clear Alpha what he wants November. us to do. Holding point Alpha 3 on 26 left via Papa and Alpha November. Easy 8095. That's what I mean. We have a fully fledged 787 here. I can't believe uh, I still see people online dismiss it and say, well, yeah, 787 is it's usable now, but still, it's not that great. But I don't know, I think it's really very good. Even the windmilling engines, you know, it's, it's, it's the real deal. Okay, that's far enough. We're behind this white line. This airplane, I'm not quite sure they're in an interesting position. Also an interesting airline to be this far away from home, but there we go. Bamboo's a Vietnamese airline. <laughs> Brakes are set. Let's get those engines started. You know, I was working earlier on the 146 video, and it was <laughs> such a relief to come back to the 787. <laughs> I absolutely love the 146, and I don't mean that in terms of the add-on. I just mean in terms of the amount of things needed to do to start the engines. <laughs> right, let's start the... Put them both into start. That'll bring up the lower page. Now, again, in the real airplane, they wouldn't even spin at this point. Nothing happens until you turn these on. But it's bel above 5 degrees, below 40, so we can auto start. Have a good day, Ryanair 1137 at uh, Mac 1, ready for departure. Ryanair 1137, still on my frequency, 126, decimal 825, goodbye. And we were setting their 787s, oh no, I did not know that. Easy eight six two three. You've gone the wrong way. Take the next left onto Quebec. Any sim audio at all from for everyone? Tugs. I don't know why that happens. I have this glitch where they all I get several tugs. What a beauty! Completely automatic start. The airplane has all the right, um, all the monitoring, obviously. Look at that beautiful swoop on the blue line. Paddy did a fantastic job there. That works really nicely. Yeah, ahead of its time, this delivery. So that's it, running. Engines are up and running. So we go up here, we check the generators have all come online. No amber lights, they have indeed. So we don't need the APU anymore. Then we move over and we check if we need the anti-ice. We don't. It's dry and it's 11 degrees, so that's fine. Then I'm going to move down, set the flaps to 5. 5. Uh, which is what our performance is based on. Uh, oh, something we should have done in the uh, pre-flight flow was do the trims. So I'm just going to run that trimmer nose down. It does not reset after landing, unfortunately. Is the 862? A firm, uh, next left on Tequila, please hold short of 5.25. There we go. Break, break, easy. Eight, zero, uh, and then I'm going to do recall, make sure there's nothing uh, there. So, TCAS off is fine. So Cabin temperature is the extra one. one. Two, two, That's eight, uh, hopefully, if I go over here, I can press uh, systems service, uh, and keep an eye on it. Two, two, That's light. reducing. Easy, eight, zero, <laughs> Flight deck's going to struggle. <laughs> 
uh, what else can we do like that? Not a lot, really. We've got both packs running. We've got all the cabin air compressors running down here because you're on the main generators now. So, yeah, it should be fine. That would, that would eventually come down. Uh, and we get rid of the secondary engines. Good. Let's run the flight controls. We've waved off the ground crew. Nice and slow on the Boeing. Griffin, 82 Bravo, ready to taxi. I'm quite looking at the outside of this. Look at that. Lots, lots moving, lots going on. Are you able to get that mic from your current position? Right there. Yeah, we can make that turn, uh, Griffin, 82 Bravo. Good stuff. Right, Mike one, runway two six left. Good stuff. Right. Mike one via Mike Griffin eight two Four. Oh, there we go. We didn't go through this one. Now the real airplane actually, if you can believe this, will tell you when you haven't done that checklist. Isn't that impressive? And that's why the trim would have it would have shown up the trim as well. MCP, we've done the V two, we've done the LNAV, VNAV, and we got uh, six thousand feet. We've done the takeoff speeds. We won VR and V two of one fifty. CD pre flight is completed. Run the trimmer. Taxi tape or briefing. Before start checklist is completed. Um, that was me rushing because of air traffic control. And then if we go back to normal, next is before taxi. So anti ice is in auto, recall is checked, auto brake RTO, flight controls checked, ground equipment clear, APU off. Bravo, before taxi Alpha, checklist complete, uh, back to ND. Now I'm not worried about the camera temperature. If it doesn't clear before takeoff, we will go anyway because we know it's uh, not actually an issue. <laughs> it, just, it's, uh, yeah, it would be nice and cool by now. GMC 346 request taxi. By a break, break, Griffin, 82 Bravo, no further ATC available, monitor Unicom, 122.8. Nuclear off the elevator's nice indeed. Agreed, Santiago, uh, I noticed that. Bravo, <laughs> yeah, it is live like weather. It does look a bit nicer than I expected. Yeah. Repet for repet taxi for takeoff. Easy 86 two three taxi holding point alpha three runway two six left via Papa and Alpha November. Taxi holding point uh, holding point alpha three two six left via Papa Alpha November. Bravo Alpha Victor five nine six Gatwick Ground hello. That's a great spot to mango. Um, what are your intentions, please? Do you want to depart VFR? There is indeed a little Kruger flap um, on the inside of the engines. It sits about here. Um, you can see it when you do your walk around. It's not modeled here. No, the slats are down in the fire position, but yeah, there's also a little flap that folds out just to smooth the air between the engine and the wing. Uh, and it's it's a complex piece of engineering, but that's what they did. But yeah, it's not modeled here, sadly. See the HUDs? I wonder if I... Look at that, even the HUD folds Bravo, away. Alpha, Victor, five, nine, six, <laughs> That's super. Lauren B says, Sim audio is there, 7H is quite exciting. Indeed, it is excellent. Yeah, the 777 300, if you hear that start up, that makes your chest vibrate. Like, the most amazing noise. Those huge engines, but the trip, uh, the seven eight engines are just a little bit quieter, as you'd hope. That's part of its selling feature. Uh, Grant, good evening, easy five nine. I'm going to put the taxi five, lights five, on. Six, five, clearance In advance of going. Information echo. I'm not sure. Three, what are we waiting for? Bit of a queue, but we're all fine. Easy five nine. I get with ground. Hello, say again. Stand number. Good five, things about five, seven eight. Five. Thank you. Stand by. Very efficient. Bravo Alpha Victor 596 Gatwick Ground. Very efficient APU and very efficient taxiing. It it doesn't get through fuel too quickly during the taxi, and it's same if you get stuck on the ground on the APU. Now, why does that matter? Well, if you've taken just the right amounts of fuel, you'll have certain amounts of fuel accounted for for APU and so on. But uh, sometimes on the Airbus, let's say you're in a hot place and you've run the APU for a long time, and you you then get an hour delay because of a slot from air traffic or something. It can be a bit of a shame because you start burning through your fuel and you start to lose, you know, you can lose 100 plus kilos. So it's nice that when the engine of the APU doesn't burn much fuel, like the 781, it actually means it doesn't matter if you get that delay, you don't burn through your continuous fuel. Thanks for waiting. Taxi holding point Alpha 2, runway 26 left via Kilo, Papa and Alpha Sierra. 
No problem at all. We'll taxi to Alpha 226 left via Kilo Papa and Alpha Sierra, JMC 346. Uh, right. And I say, say contingency Thank fuel, you, you, you shouldn't burn your contingency fuel before you go uh, well, off stand, and certainly. But there's other circumstances like getting stuck out near the runway and so on. But anyway, right, let's get this right. So we're on Kilo Alpha. We're going to say Kilo. So first right, second left onto Papa. All the way down to Alpha Sierra. That's what we did last time when we were wrong. Um, last time we flew from Gatwick. And then hold it Alpha 2. Right, good luck. Good luck, everybody. Now, I don't know if my head tracking is going to work with such a low frame rate. We'll see. Brakes released. I'll just move the microphone down a bit. I might go a little bit quieter. But there we go. Let me turn this light off. That might help. Easy five and I'm I really pushing my computer here. Ready to copy. Uh, ready to copy clearance. Easy five nine clear to Manchester via Lambourne six. Mike departure runway two six left. Squawk three five one no, four. It's just a little bit too much for my computer today. <laughs> seven eight hectopascals. Uh, one, thank you so much for the five pound super chat. Really, really appreciate that. It's very, very generous. Very kind of you. Three says first time catching you live. How did you find? It's going to fly with the yoke after so many years using a flight stick in the Airbus. Indeed, that question gets asked quite a lot because it's it's it's. I, I totally understand. It's a very um, different thing, but because all pilots are trained on the yoke when they start, you know, no one. Well, you can if you start flying on a diamond, I suppose. You, not a diamond. Is it diamond that has a stick or a Cirrus or something? But either way, a yoke is a relatively intuitive way to fly an airplane, and most pilots would have started out by flying in a Cessna or a Piper that all use yokes as well. So it's unlikely um, that you've ne never flown with a yoke at some point in your sim phase or your training. As a result, it's no issue swapping between the two. They're, they still pull towards you, push away from you, go left and right. Um, so actually, it's totally fine. I don't mind the yoke at all. I, I honestly don't even think about it when I'm flying. Uh, I think... If you're flying manually, perhaps the yoke can be a little bit less. It's just a bit more movement needed, you know, and it's quite heavy. The seven eight yoke is a heavy, heavy thing to move. They've they've kept it quite weighted, um, so that's probably the the most unusual bit. So flying a visual approach to something in the seven eight is a little bit of a different experience to the A three twenty. Other than that, I uh, I enjoy it. I sort of like having a yoke back. It's nice for the change, really. Change is as good as anything, isn't it? But thank you very much, uh, Seb Luke, for the super chat. Really, really appreciate it. Gower Grindwalker 2745, Clear. 320, Neil, Clear. and uh, stand 53 with Echo, request IFR2 Innsbruck. Slow it down. Gotta get past the line. This is a big airplane, remember. Even if we're only in the dash 8. But we're trying to get those main one, gears to stay four, near that center line. Clear to Innsbruck via Basically, you treat the 8 Mike and the 9 very similarly. Left. The 10 is, is five, zero, one, four, even further. Uh, <laughs> You've got to go. Zero, nine, seven, you probably Three gained a lot of muscles since you became a 78 pilot. Yes, let's hope so. <laughs> let's hope that's what's happened. And that's the reason for my weight increase since going onto long haul. <laughs> I'm doing 12 hours of sitting still. Right, let's not get this wrong. We're on Papa. Next is Alpha Sierra. So all the way down to Alpha Sierra. So don't enter the runway. Oh, there we go. It's quite exciting. I think they need to move the click spot for the HUD. Can I say that? I don't need the whole HUD to be a click spot. I think it should just stay up here. That's what we need. Monitor Unicom 128. Goodbye. Monitor Unicom 1228. JMC 346. Thank you for your help. Bye bye. That's surprising. Good evening. Easy 3T Whiskey Juliet. We'll do that a little bit later. Aircraft A320. Request an IFR clearance to Geneva, please. FPS would increase, indeed. Uh, thanks for the aviator. Yeah, we'll get slightly smoother show. Uh, it's worse for you guys than it is for me, I'm afraid. As always. Nice and slow. Ten knots. That's all you want to be doing around these sort of turns. Here's our Sierra. So proud. We've got it right today. Slow down with the turn. 
Easy true to Whiskey Juliet, read back correct. And got me still on the Sansa 1521. What a beautiful machine, though. I think we can all agree on that. What's the minus four on the attitude indicator mean? I'll speak to it. Great question. That's the uh, red out. So it sits at minus four because we are uh, sitting on the ground and the, the wheels are compressed. So zero would be touchdown if the wheels were dangling down, as it were. But obviously they're compressed at the moment, so it goes to minus. Three hundred does the same. So you can see to line up the nose gear, you actually run the line just through the right part of the PFD. Or if you're in the right seat, through the left part. Griffin, four, three, kilo, gather ground. Hello. Right, one, two, two, eight. So we'll just. For you shortly. Other station calling for clearance. Pass your message. Osprey, one, four, six, Tango, stand seventeen. Looking for clearance. Sorry. There's a few Ospreys okay. going. Is um, is British Avgeek departing from uh, from Gatwick at the same time as us? Aha. Now, I was ready for this one. So thank you again to Seb Luke for the super chat. And I can see why it's that super chat. <laughs> yes, I have looked into the 8020 losing all its flight control computers. Thank you for the super chat, Wise Hat. Really, really appreciate it. Very, very kind of you. Let me just stop here because we're, we're seconds as easy yet. I'm not going to try and do the turn. So parking brake is set. Um, yes, I have. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. <laughs> I Just before the stream, I was reading about it to make sure I, I knew this was coming. Did your wingtip just commit to runway incursion, Stephen asked. Now, that's a great question. I've had this, so we're stopped at Alpha 2. There is a, an issue with some airport designs where this is unavoidable, where if you're cleared to taxi, then you would. Now, I don't know if this is the correct lineup point for Gatwick. I don't know what happens at the real airport. Um, I mean, this is a very good model of Gatwick, so I assume it's pretty close. It can be that they they accept that even though you're not supposed to put any part of the aircraft over it another place that does it is frankfurt there's an area in frankfurt where this is something that just happens due to the design so that's a great question <laughs> that i don't have an answer for uh, but yeah why is that thanks so much for the five pounds super chat very very kind thank you for supporting the channel and yes i have indeed looked up the 820 lost world flight control computers it was an incident with smart links uh it was the smart links 8020 in Tallinn in 2018. It's very, very interesting, and we'll talk about it once we're underway. Certainly. Yeah, ask me again. <laughs> Indeed, finally. I think it took me five five requests. John asks, is there any chance you'll make it to FS Weekend next year? It was a load of fun. You know, I, I saw that, and it does look fun. I, I need to figure out a way to get to how I can get to these things. I need to figure this out. Lauren B says, does the chart say 788 is allowed on this line? So my point, yeah, I, I'm not sure. Air traffic could send us this way, and certainly there's triple sevens at Gatwick, so it's the same wingspan. I'm pretty sure I've seen triple sevens on this line, but I can't guarantee that. But my point is more that there are just places where this happens because of the way the lines are formatted. I don't know if that's just a cat two. No, that doesn't look like the main holding point. I don't know. It's a very interesting question. Because, yeah, Frankfurt is another one that has it. If you look uh, on the charts there, you'll see that there's a bit where you just can't avoid infringing. Anyway, we've done our flight controls. Uh, in terms of an update, same departure, same performance. We've got our flaps set. We've got the trim set. We're just waiting on the cabin temperature, which I know is not going to get better now, so I'm going to get rid of that. We're going to imagine the cabin crew are ready. We're going to put it to Tara, and I'm going to press cancel to get rid of that cabin temperature warning. We're going to have the navigation display over there. Good. And I'm going to keep the engine display over here. We're going to wind up the range. And we would, of course, also turn on the weather radar, especially on a day like today. Good stuff. Now, this cabin out stuff should disappear once we move off that page, but we'll see. Good. Um, what if I go... I've got an idea. Let's go systems. There we go. Get rid of it. And then go into ND. Good. Yeah. That wouldn't do that in the real airplane, but anyway, there we go. We, the, cab, the air information only shows up when, um, when you're on one of the systems pages. Uh, no change to that, no change to the legs page. We're going to take off. We might leave the flaps out, depending on what our clean speed turns out to be, um, whether we can go to flaps up. And we'll fly the turn, we're going to 6,000 feet using VNAV. We've got Togo Toga on VNAV. Right, let's run the checklist. So, four takeoff checklist flaps, uh, they are at five. That is the four takeoff checklist complete. Again, that's a simplified version of the checklist. Okay, is everyone ready? Let's go. So, let's announce this. We're the only airplane on the ground here now. Ooh, the frames, the frames. 
It's because it keeps doing a loss of detail thing. It, it keeps suddenly popping things in, which I'm not used to it's doing. Gatwick traffic, JMC 346, taking off runway 26 left, Bogner the departure. Right, brakes released. Yon says, it is at the museum I volunteer at. If you need some information for making it, let me know. Thank you very much. Will indeed. Lauren B says, ATC will not usually restrict you from these things. It's up to the pilot to know where they're not allowed to go. Indeed. Uh, my point more is that if, if Gatwick Ground are happy to send us there, then it's likely um, it's not an issue. But that's certainly agreed. Uh, if air traffic control can and will try and send you down taxiways you can't fit, uh, they, are, they are generally meant to know because, of course, it's not particularly fair if they try and send you down the wrong one. Um, but ultimately, like all these things, wingtip clearance, ground clearance, ground collision, traffic avoidance, all of these things ultimately come down to the pilots. This is why pilots have to be given a bit of a... a bit of... They, they have all the responsibility. So... Can't see any traffic out there. So, yeah, if air traffic control clears you to line up and take off and then you look outside and the airplane's landing on the runway... Who's going to be at fault? You will. Now, of course, the investigation will bring it up about... Let me check I am on the unicom. The investigation will bring up that air traffic control could have uh, prevented it, but and, and it's, it's unlikely to hold up. You know, if air traffic control sends you down the wrong taxiway and you hit something, then they're going to they're going to have some discussions had to. But even so, ultimately, everything is the responsibility of the pilots. 777X is a bigger aeroplane than the 787, especially the 788 wise hat. No, we're taking our time, there's no one around. And it's uh, big airplanes have a habit of doing this, making a big performance about getting on the runway, so I don't see why we can't. This is long haul after all. Very, very important stuff. <laughs> Crawling onto the runway. <laughs> Type rating did not cover the 777X, no. I don't think uh, anyone's does yet, unless you're a Boeing pilot. 777X is way bigger than the 78, even when comparing with a 10. It is indeed bigger than a 10. The 10 is bigger than a 777-200, although it's not as wide, so I don't think it holds uh, this, any more passengers. Pretty much the 787-10 is the same as a 777-200 in terms of numbers. Right, here we go. We're lined up. It's a strong wind from the left, so we're going to have a little bit of forward pressure and left aileron, and we're going to be careful with these engines. So let's go. See that wing bouncing around. Excellent. Stabilised. Press. Holding that aileron. Thrust ref, toga. Toga, that's what we want. Now, I may have accidentally overridden that a little bit. So, we just set the thrust there. 80 knots. Forward pressure to neutral. Just holding that right rudder. It's so grippy. It's so hard to control these airplanes on the ground in this sim. There's V1. A bit more aileron needed. We're not actually level. There we go. There's wings level. And rotate. Now, we hold the aileron. Hold the rudder. Gently rotate the airplane. Lift it into the air. Now we can let it weathercock and release some of that pressure to the toga reference line. Positive rate. Gear up. And we're away. It's a little bit awkward, I think, the, the crosswind takeoff in the 7.8, but it's just too big to do what we do with the 320, which is, I really like the 320 technique. I need to get more into wind, where you can just... Um, allow the airplane to weathercock as soon as the nose gears up but you can't do that on the, the 7.8 see that uh, hashed out flight path vector that's because we've gone too far the, sorry the crosswind is too strong so if I declutter it we'll actually get the full view there you go but it's just a bit of a strange looking HUD for a lot of people it's very different to the PFD forward trim needed now Flaps to five, sorry, to one. 
put it in the autopilot. Thrust of Anna Venus speed. And up is our 220 knots, so we can do it all. So flaps up. There we go. Now it's in VNF speed, so it should go to 4,000 feet. Let's see if it does. It's going to struggle. It's not going to do that. Sorry, 5,000. It's above 4. It should level off at 5. Let's see. There you go. Speed VNF path. It's going to level at 5. Good stuff. Gear is up. Flaps are up. Checklist incomplete norm. It's just the after taking off checklist. Oh, we already did that one. The flaps. Uh, this is a bug in this version of the software. So we'll go back to the ND. And that's it. Gears up. Auto throttle's in. It's in speed mode. 220 knots on that VNF path. So I'm going to sit here and watch it. What I'm expecting it to do is automatically climb to 6 when it should. If you are watching and enjoying, do please hit the like button. And uh, yeah, it makes a big difference to the channel. Away we go. Glorious. What a beautiful aeroplane. That was indeed a windy takeoff, Tango. I do agree. 7.8 seems really zippy, says White Hat. Well, we're very light. This is we're, we're well below the maximum landing weight of a 787. And remember, long-haul airplanes usually take off above their maximum landing weight. So significantly often as well. Great thing about the 7.8 is it's incredibly good in turbulence. I think it rides turbulence nicely. The, the dampening system they've invented for it or applied to it is it's really super. All the anti-icing is taken care of automatically. Not worried about that. One of the many things we don't have to do on the 787. I won't say where my first flight was in the 787, um, but it's a good question. But yeah, I won't say. Just to keep a little bit of uh, guessing going. <laughs> what a beauty. Do you ever miss the dash eight? Asks Squeaky. Um, no, no, I don't think I do. I liked the dash eight. I don't miss operating it every day. When you come and fly an airplane like the seven eight seven, and I'm just being honest here. There we go. Now it wants to climb up to six because that's the next margin. Sorry, no, it's accelerates two fifty. Six is uh, after the one seven point. Uh, yeah, the dash eight. It just didn't look after you in the same way the A320 and certainly the 787 can and do. 55 knots at 5,000 feet. That is breezy. And Tobacco says, I mean, he is in the Dash 8, 787 Dash 8. Indeed, it does It does take me back to that a lot every time I say Dash 8. <laughs> no, it's <a> Dash Trash. <laughs> yeah, the Dash, it's a nice machine and it's great to learn to fly the airplane. I know everyone says that and it's a bit cliche, but that's just the truth. It is really good. You, you really learn about energy and maneuvering an airplane, particularly on final approach. But when you're flying it day in, day out, it has a lot of room to, to not look after you. Whereas, as you saw, you saw the setup in this airplane. You know, just it's just such a beautifully automated thing. Um, yeah, I, I do like the 7.8. And then the cabin altitude, the, the humidity, all of this good stuff. So Luke says, I've got to shoot off, I'm afraid. Enjoy the rest of your flight. Thanks so much. Thank you for your super chat, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for coming along. Jonathan Fisher. Uh, oh, and Peter Diaz says, have a nice flight. Too bad I have to leave. Anyway, I'll continue watching later on this evening. See you on your next stream. See you next time. Thanks very much for coming along, Peter. I appreciate it. It's definitely dinner time for a lot of people. And here we go. Because we're in VNAV path, it's automatically going up to six in thrust ref VNAV speed. Now, if I were to, let's say, uh, we, we want to go to flight level 410. Before we do, I'm just going to check the VNAV page and make sure that's sensible to go that high that quickly. Optimum maximum 418. Yep, 410 is fine. So I can put it in the window and look at this. It's not it's just gonna ignore me. I've put a 410 in, it's gonna stay in VNAV because that's the last restriction it's got. So I need to convince it to go up there. So I'll say yes, carry on please. Speed VNAV path. And it's not gonna move either because it's still got the six thousand. So I'm gonna click it again to remove the restriction. And again. There we go. You've got to clear out all the uh, the whole uh, restrictions in there. So there we go. Climb two thrusters in. Thrust ref, enough speed, 250 knots, and then that will clear out eventually. We're going up to flight level, so let's set standards. Look at that change with the Q&H. Incredibly low pressure in the UK at the moment. Evening Sea Eagle and Tomango. Indeed, we are certainly drifting. Yeah. 
Hence that flight path vector through the HUD is way off to the side. It might now... Yeah, so now it's 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 in enough that it's not having to um, hash it out, as it were. Bring the heading mug round. Can't slip those in the heading mug now. That's our new life on the 7-8. Sadly, nothing we can do about that. Uh, Jonathan Fisher says, Hi, uh, I was on a 787 the other day and noticed that the AC pack seems to go off during engine start. Why is that if engine start is electric? Great question. Great question. Uh, the reason is that uh, it's just a load issue. So the 787 generators are incredibly powerful that you don't want to have systems running whilst you're changing. Because remember, you've got the APU generator only has two generators on it. Now, they're big generators, but those generators are trying to start both of the engines at the same time. So you actually, it sheds, it's called load shedding, and it would just dump things it doesn't want to run. And that's all automated. We don't have to do load shedding ourselves. You'll remember, and you'll see in my 146 video coming soon, <laughs> keep talking about it, but yeah, that you have to do things like turn off the bleed air before starting the engines and so on to make sure there's enough pressure to start the engines. It's the same with electricity, and it basically the, the cabin air compressors are hugely... Uh, hugely draining on the electricity system so they're one of the first things to get shed so yeah the packs and the, the cabinet pressures just get turned off for a while while it does it and that's it but you're at a good spot they are indeed just like on the 320 they would indeed turn off when you start the engines just like the packs would but it's nice and smooth up here i don't think we need to keep the passengers in forever for the fun of it so we'll put that to auto we'll take off our lights that we aren't using and just go with the strobe lights beacon and nav yeah all good we've done all of our weights we've done the center of gravity and i would hope for a director drake at this point so i'd go legs drake select bring to the top looks sensible rear now nav executes Six, 54 knots that's not too bad at fourteen thousand feet accelerating up it should do a gentle climb while accelerating it's a little bit mean of it to uh to actually level off Mango says A330 Neo wings are also curvy like 787. If you look from the top below view, they look very similar to 78 wings. Yeah, they do. They, the 330 Neo also has this style of winglet, this uh, blended wing, I think it's called. So it's interesting that both Boeing and Airbus have moved over to it. You can see how windy it is down there, all the white caps. To be fair, I think. Yeah, I think, uh, I think there are some clear patches around the UK. But yeah. Where's it going? Oh yeah, it gets. Um, yeah, so that that seems to be the the way for long range airplanes certainly. George Umpkin says, "Made it out just behind you." Pray for my flight being crashed to desktop free. Fingers crossed, George. Fingers crossed. Wisehat says, "What do you miss from the 320 that you wish you have on the 787?" Uh, the vertical modes, managed descent and open descent and climb. I think they're just really great. Uh, the tray table is obviously number one. Why is that says if I were a 78 pilot and former 320 pilot, it'd be the props for either having a table. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, the table is the thing. <laughs> Tweaky says, I used to commute on a Dash 8 from uh, East Midlands to Belfast every week, was usually fun. Yeah, it is fun. It's a fun aeroplane. Nothing wrong with it. But yeah, for working and, and as an office, as it were, you compare like these seats and the space and the comfort and the noise and the humidity and everything like that. 78 is rather lovely. Hard to, hard to, it isn't. Epilate says, do the models properly portray wing flex? As I remember taking off in Heathrow on a 789 and the wings were practically above the fuselage. Let me have a look. Getting some frame rates again now. I oh, won't let me, hold on. Just trying to get the same angle that you would have in the, uh, in the real aircraft. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. It's a little hard to say. They're up there, which is above the wing. Uh, sorry, above the fuselage. So it's not far off. Maybe they flex a tiny bit more than that. Maybe. Maybe. It's tricky, though. I don't really see the wings when I'm flying it. I think these are flexing to a point, because that is probably just above the fuselage or in line with the top. Maybe they should flex a tiny bit more. It's very tricky to say very hard to say it's not an angle most people get to see on the 78 
Because if you're looking out the window in the cabin, yeah, they, 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 that looks a little bit flatter than I would expect. Could just be a camera angle perspective. That's a bit more, I suppose from that angle, they look a bit more normal. Yeah, possibly. Very, very flexible wings. In turbulence, you should see them flying around. <laughs> they go up and down. It's best not to look. <laughs> RP Volcom says, first I want to say thanks for teaching me the 787. I know you have uh, done takeoff videos. Have you done a landing tutorial yet? So, uh, the next video for the 787, the descent and landing tutorial is is on the way very soon. I've done it. I filmed it. I need to get it all put together and get online. So, yes, coming soon. Thank you for your patience. I'm sorry it's taken so long. Critic says, the default HP20 has an incorrect cockpit geometry. Since Kuro is based on the default 787, is the cockpit correct? Good question. At first glance, yes. The pen holders are there. These are big, thick pillars. They are indeed. This one is really thick as well. Um, it's... I, I'm struggling to find anything immediately problematic. All these... Look at the frame rates now. We're flying along. The, these tray tables, the space here, this is all correct. Yeah, these little latches, the cup holders. They, they've, they've done a fantastic job. They really have. I, I, I just... I really I really want this airplane to get appreciated in the sim. You know, I think they've done a great job. I know there are some textures available. But in terms of geometry, I, I, ha I have no issue looking at this uh, and saying, yeah, this looks like a 787. The wipers sit there. They sometimes sit slightly out of the centre pillar, but that's about it. Yeah. This drops down with the standby compass always there, indeed. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's fine. These jump seats are in the right place. That's not quite right. Unless it's usually, this jump seat's usually a more substantial seat. This one is just a foldy away seat. This one is a proper seat because uh, it's quite often used. Um, and you can see here, backrest must be fully efficient position during taxi take landing and when moving seat aft. But you can see here, it's not really adjustable on this one. So I think that's the only thing I could say at the moment, which is being pretty nitpicky of me. So I won't complain. They've even got this door. Yeah, you've got a door on this side. But on this side, you don't. You just have the space. And there's the wardrobe. Usually documents or something up there. Yeah, I think they've done a great job. Look, they've even got the microphone jack. So you've got the XLR plug and the, D, uh, the GA plugs. And then this little latch folds down so you can hang your headset on it. Or if you've got a slim enough headset, you can hang it on this little hook. Not many fit there, to be honest. This big white box above your head, that's a handle you can use, but no one ever does because it's just not really in a useful position. Uh, and you can just move the seat back and out of the way as we talked about in my last video about the uh, last time incident. But uh, yeah, the this is all a projector for the HUDs. So that like projects down the image onto there, which is called the combiner. Got some weather up ahead. It could blow straight onto our path. I think we'll be above it looking out the window. But yeah, no, I think it's good. I, I don't have much to complain about. I like the angles of the, the glare shield and so on as well. It all seems sensible. I know that was a problem. I know the default A320 had lots of funny things about it. How good are the electric brakes on the 787, Tango asks? They're very good. Good question. Very good. I like them a lot. It's very reassuring knowing that even if you lose all your hydraulic systems, you've still got brakes. I like that. They're actually quite clever. A little bit too clever sometimes. The brakes on the 787... So carbon brakes... This is where we get really technical. Welcome to the podcast. Um, the carbon brakes on the 78, like most commercial airlines, like the A320 and the Dash 8, they don't want to be applied too many times. What they want is to be applied once and let to heat up. So you try and reduce the number of applications. That's how you reduce the wear. So what Boeing have done, in their wisdom, is on the 787, we have obviously, well, you can't see them now, you have four main gears. System gear. So you've got four wheels on each of the main bogies. And what they do is 
at below 60 knots and when you're at taxi sort of speeds it will just apply half the brakes unless you apply full braking pedal so it will apply the front two and then you release your brakes and then you apply them again and it will apply the back two then you release them and then you apply them again and it will do the front two now you don't consciously think about this but it just means that when you taxi the brakes are a lot less grippy than they are during the landing roll when they all apply uh, at high speed uh, and Boeing does that so that, that way you've halved the number of applications on each set of brakes really clever idea really simple and really smart uh, I think why wouldn't you do that yeah Wise Hat, thank you so much for a five pound super chat. Really appreciate it. Thank you again. Wise Hat says, since the 787 uses fly by wire, does the plane have the same protections that the Airbus have, such as stall, banking, overspeed, etc.? Great question. Thank you so much again for the super chat and uh, for supporting the channel. Now, the simple answer to that is no. It has similar protections. The f what you there's two different things. So the Airbus has fly by wire like the 78 you're absolutely right and that the flight controls are electronically controlled by signals from computers the airbus is the same what the airbus also has is called flight uh, flight envelope protection so it has the pitch protection the roll protection and so on 78 doesn't have that that does that's not because of the fly by wire thing that's airbus put those on there boeing is very much of the mind that well if the pilot wants to do something the pilot needs to be able to do it because it could be an issue with instrumentation or something and there have been cases where you know that has been true and there's also been cases where the opposite has been true however the 78 does have a version of all of those things if you try and bank the 78 too far it would actually fight you it will try and bank back to where it uh, wants to be so if I take out the autopilot and put the airplane too far, it will fight its way back. I might try it actually, let's see. So just hit disconnect. And obviously now this is not anything to do with real flying. Let's just see what if the, the Sobo have it modeled. There you go, feel that? So I'm holding it and if I let go, it should put itself back to something sensible. The real airplane will actually snatch the yoke out your hand a little bit. It sort of fights you back. There you go, let's put it back to 30. So those of you who have watched my videos on the Airbus flight control laws will know that that is very very similar to the way the Airbus would behave so as I try and bank round it just fights me it's just fighting but I can you can see that I can override it into an upset position you'll see the HUD even changes to the upset recovery position again fantastic detail by the working title team absolutely brilliant so yeah it has some of them same for the stall it won't let you stall without shaking and then pushing the yoke out your hands but you can override it should you should you really need to and why would you need to well that will be a case of just the instruments losing the plot and trying to think something's wrong an example of that being of course sadly the mcas on the 73 max hayden j robin says what would happen if you attempted to take off in an airline well outside of the wind limits it's a good question uh, you never would because your job's not worth it your life's not worth it uh, no one else on the airplane is up for that you know you uh, risk management is such that we don't we, well of course wouldn't do that the limits are done because they are demonstrated limits of what the airplane is safely capable of doing in normal conditions um, so taking off with outside of those limits and you 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 know you're just going to get yourself in trouble and you have the risk of damaging the airplane in sort of some variety the other thing though, if you were, let's say the crosswind was way outside the limits, you may not have enough control over the airplane to, to, to do it. Uh, the rudder may not be strong enough, things like that. And you might think, well, it probably would be okay. But the other thing to consider is, of course, if an engine fails, you need even more rudder than you have. So uh, yeah, a strong crosswind with an engine failure is a nasty thing. And to be outside the limits, you're just going to have real problems. Yeah, so um, no, no one would try it. But uh, yeah, what would happen, depending on how far out the limits you are, you might find the airplane does it, uh, or it might not. You might actually just run out of control authority. And, you know, people have done that around the world. Lorenzo says, hi, I'm back. Quick question. Uh, how, I'm assuming it's how do you deal with fatigue uh, with long flights? So with long flights, long haul is all about looking after yourself effectively which sounds very selfish but what I mean by that is you have to consider how you're going to be ready to fly the approach and how to keep yourself in a position where you're fit to operate uh, in an emergency if something were to happen if the plane were to suddenly have a decompression now anything that dramatic would obviously give you adrenaline boost and you'd actually I'm sure be awake very quickly but 
more of the problem is the normal operation, right? Let's say you're flying an approach. If you're too tired, it's say the approach feels relatively straightforward. But if you're too tired, you could start missing things. So for a start, there's two of you. If the flight's long enough, there'll be three of you. Uh, so there'll be a third pilot. That's why this jump seat is actually a real seat normally because it's occupied more often. So if there's three of you, that pilot would hopefully um, be ready as well. But more to the point, you split up the rest. So you each get some rest during the flight. But that's not always enough. Uh, obviously, there are other things you need to do to look after yourself and manage your rest. And that's particularly important when you're down route, as it's called. So when you're away, uh, how would you, you know, you need to think about what you're going to do down route. And in particular, how are you going to manage your rest leading up to the flight? So if you're doing a night flight home, you know, then you're going to need to really, you need to figure out how you're going to do that safely. So typically, and what everybody does is they'll go to bed for a few hours before the flight you know have an extended nap even if you don't sleep very well or even if you just sleep a little bit in that time that rest and that that relaxation is enough to get you you know through so things like that but it's a good question and it's a tricky tricky thing to do there's no denying it it's hard it's hard being that tired i have been and i'm not talking about whilst at work i mean at home and so on i once i get home from work on long haul I've been more tired than I've ever been in my life once you get through the front door. It's astonishing how tired you can be. It, it, it blew my mind. <laughs> so you really are just managing that as best you can. Why well, says, does the 7 have alternate law where it wouldn't even fight the pilots on the inputs? It does have an alternate law. Um, not called alternate, but we have flight controls and you can see flight control mode is in normal and there's a backup mode. Um, but it's relatively rare to end up in it. I think there's a l the airplane can have a lot of failures but stay in the normal mode. It's very impressive actually, very impressive. So yes, it, things can degrade and systems like the protections like we just discussed can fail. Which aspect of your muscle memory required the most time to adapt when transitioning from the A320 to the 787? Fantastic question from Skypilot. Uh, yeah, that's really easy actually. It's the nose gear landing. On the 320, Landing the nose gear is super easy. I didn't appreciate how easy it was. Uh, and I, I'm trying to remember what it was like on the Dash 8. I don't really remember. On the Airbus, you land, there's a, and there's a couple of seconds before the, the auto brake kicks in. So you land, and the nose gear gently sort of lowers down. And the only time it would come down pretty heavy is if the brakes had kicked in. You'd, you'd kept the nose too high. So you really, you didn't even need to hold off on the nose you could just sort of gently relax the side stick 787 is is very different uh, you you land and you've got to catch that nose gear if otherwise you land and the nose is going to come cr crunching in very quickly and that's because all the spoilers all the auto brakes and everything kicking quite quickly and the nose just wants to come down it's just a different design um so yeah you have to, that's been hard harder to me to or the hardest thing like muscle memory wise was that and the second thing would be the crosswinds, keeping that into wind aileron. Something I used to do all the time on the Dash 8, something you didn't do on the A320, unless you really needed it, and that was very rare. So yeah, catching that nose gear, that's the thing. Tabango says, how's the co-pilot doing? She's doing absolutely fine. She's not here today, um, but she's, she's, uh, she's, she's doing well. Jonathan Fisher says, have you had to use the true north setting in real life? No. RP Volcom says, is there any way to automate the step climb? So when I'm at work and try to do a 15 hour flight, I don't burn all my fuel try flying too low. Um, it's a good question. We, of course, would set the level we want to climb to. When we level off at 410, it will go into VNAV path. Then, I wonder if you were to set 430, and it was to calculate a step climb, uh, it would automatically do it. Sorry, wrong transition actually there. Um, I don't, I, I'm not confident on that. We would always set the level we want to be at in the window, so I haven't tried. It's a good question, but I don't know. The only thing I can think of is if you leave it in VNAV path and set a higher flight level in here, but if you've tried that and it hasn't worked, then I, I don't know, I'm afraid. It may not be possible.
Uh, I'm not a massive fan of the current weather radar implementation because uh, it, it just paints clouds, really. And clouds, you know, you have to fly through clouds sometime. It's fine, but I want, I'd like to see something that does the precipitation. That would be amazing. And the weather engine's so powerful in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I feel like of any sim we've ever had, some traffic over there, uh, this is the one that should be able to do that. So I would, I would like to see that happen. But for now, yeah. Is it usable? I suppose it's sort of usable. We saw that weather earlier, but that was way beneath us. Oh, there's some crossing traffic here. That's a bit exciting and a bit close. 1300 above. That was that line. Are they climbing as well? Nope. Let's go. Uh, this is where we can just go hold, and the airplane will hold the altitude. Nice. In the Airbus, we would have pushed VS0. Is that Eurowings? That is Eurowings. Of course. Right. Let's go. Ah, that's interesting. Thrust ref flitch speed. Because I need to do that. There we go. Thrust ref VNAV speed. Carry on our climb. Control Gamer asks, if you had the opportunity to fly the A350 instead of the 78, would you take it? Not yet. I need more time on the Boeing, and I like the 787. But yeah, one day, yeah, sure. 380, 350. I'd like to try out a long haul Airbus, see how they behave differently, what they've done different. Because of course, a lot of my things I like about the 78 are partly because it's a long haul airplane. So long haul Airbuses may well have similar or better systems, I don't know. However, the cabin air is so nice on the 78. Vector Victor says, have you had the supposed brake issue that prevents the gear from retracting after takeoff? So it, it's there's different uh, different MELs or DDGs as they're called on the Boeing. Dispatch deviations, something like that guide. Uh, anyway, the point is, if there's a brake not working, then you have to let the wheels spin down uh, because normally when you retract the wheels on the 787 and any commercial airliner of this type the all the wheels are spinning after takeoff of course because you were taking off quite fast so the brakes apply stop the wheels and then they retract into the bay the reason you do that is because there's huge gyroscopic forces those wheels are heavy and they're spinning very fast so they're big gyroscopes if you were to then try and twist them sideways up into the bay that would apply the force to 90 degrees and, and they would twist uh, and it would be very uncomfortable and damage things so you wait for it to stop spinning and also you don't want them spinning away in the, the bay although the q400 the dash 8 certainly did you could feel them rattling away uh, and the reason the q400 could do it is because the wheels actually retracted backwards not sideways into the into the engine pots they did anyway so that's what that um issue is uh, that's being mentioned there by vector victor there there's several other dispatch mels that require you to leave the wheels down for a couple of minutes after takeoff um, so yeah, they are out there. They can happen. I have had them. Yep. Long haul ornithopter live stream. Ask Epilates. Yes, that'd be quite something. <laughs> Critic says Boeing MCDU doesn't accept fix like Airbus. Can you teach how to extend runway center line? Sure. Yeah, we'll have a look at that when we do the arrival. Try and remind me later on. We need to put in the arrival first. Which we'll do in just a moment. Our last thousand feet to go here doing 8.5 look at this we're climbing at mach decimal 8.5 up to 4.10 it's just a rocket i know it looks slow and it climbs slowly but actually we're very very fast someone says hello from bangkok captain it's 1 p.m here excellent hello to you that's a long way in advance Tomco. thanks for joining us i hope it's all going well there is it not 1 a.m i feel like i'd be 1 a.m In which case, thank you for staying up. And that, that would explain why <laughs> we might get confused between PM and AM. Uh, basically, to do a, the extended center line, you press departure arrival and then intercept down there.
So that is, uh, thank you, Paddy, for the message. That's really nice. I really like it. Uh, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, you would put it in there. But we'll see. We'll try, I'll try to remember to do it later. Here's a level off. Speed. VNF path. LNF. And that's it. If you've watched my cruise video, I highly recommend watching my video about what we do in the cruise. Um, what long haul pilots do in the cruise. Because in that, I talk about ETOPS, weather, planning, uh, and all the things you have to think about on long haul. And it's surprisingly different to short haul. Um, and things we'd be doing at this stage in the flight. One of which is the classic transponder. If you go to below, which doesn't work on here. Uh, but yeah, we can go to the fixed page and start drawing some rings around alternates that you might want to go to. I'm going to get rid of the ICAS for now for the cruise. Give it to pilot monitoring. So what do we have around us? Are we at Paris, are we? NFOJ? No. Further south. Look at that. Almost there. Making such progress. 494 tasks, 475 knots over the grounds. You really do. And you see the world slip by quicker out the window in the 787 than you do on the A320. Ranger says, how do you get sleep in that cramped crew rest area? And isn't it going to be loud because of the engines? It's loud. Not the engines. You hear the air conditioning more than anything in that crew area. It's not very loud. It's one of the quieter ones on the 78, I'm told. But you can use, um, you know, if you want to, some noise cancelling headphones or something. But yeah, it's not it's not too bad. Uh, how do you rest there in the cramped? Well, it's not the as long as you've got enough space to sort of relax in. It's more to the point that it's quiet and dark. And that's what you need. Uh, Wayland Vid says, "Hey, some pilot, the Garmin 1000 on Microsoft Flight Simulator. Wondering if it's of much use. Last ATPL exams in a few weeks. Then it's on to IFR. That's a great question." I don't use the real Garmin 1000s enough to be able to answer that one, I'm afraid. I think it's... There's some parts of it that are useful. I have done some videos using it, but I don't really remember anymore. And I I wouldn't like to suggest it's useful for flight training at this stage. Someone else will know more than me on that. Nick K says, The Concorde that sadly crashed was caused partly by being out of limits. CFG mainly. Ah, oh, there we go. Concorde very sensitive to its CFGs. Matteo has a great question. Matteo says, I have noticed both this one and the Horizon, so talking about the Kuro 78-8 and the Horizon 787-9, have a tendency to your right after takeoff. Is it a realistic behavior? No. I've, lo I've looked into this. Both of them, for some reason, apply rudder after takeoff. It's very strange. I don't know why. I don't know if it's something to do with the flight control computers adapting to the wind or whatever. But no, unrealistic. Not what the airplane does. There's no yaw on takeoff on the airplane except for the, the actual winds affecting it. Epilet's asking about... Uh, Epilet says, my mum was boarding a 380 and after about half an hour of boarding, they asked everyone off because there was an issue with the landing gear. Do you have any idea what the problem was? No, I do not. I have no idea what the problem was in that case. However, uh, one thing that sometimes happens is uh, if a tire is found to need changing, then depending on the situation, they may not allow the passengers to be on the airplane whilst the tire is changed because they, they have to put the airplane onto jacks and then they, or that part of the airplane anyway, and they don't want any movement. You know, as, as if all the passengers move around too much, it can change the weight and balance and so on. Not always, but sometimes. However, I don't know if that is um, what's going on there. Nick Case says, how are you getting on recording on your laptop? That's been great. The uh, laptop is very fast, and I've used it for several of the videos actually on the channel now, and including the one, and I've used it for not just recording the videos, but I can also edit on there and get it rendered. And it's actually very quick at rendering the video, which is one of the more time consuming bits. So that's been really useful actually. I've been very happy with it. Thank you so much, Victor. Um, Victor Mushin for the uh, 60 Polish Lottie. Very, very kind. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Victor says, hi, I've got a slightly personal question, so I totally will understand if you don't answer. What's your opinion on sleeping pills between duties? What do other pilots think about this? Airlines. 
Ah, uh, good question. Um, it totally depends. Uh, about the country and the authority, but actually, you'll find that a lot of sleeping medication is not allowed. It's it's just not considered compatible. Certainly, of course, on an airplane, absolutely not. But as you've asked, or sleeping pills between duties. It really depends on what they are and whether they're allowed. So that's a discussion to have with the, the aeromedical people. Um, I, I don't have the authoritative answer on that. Um, but yeah, it's something you have to be very careful of because there are some that you might think are okay and are actually not allowed to be used. Yeah, good question though. Thank you very much for the support, Victor. And thank you for the, uh, the, the super chat. Really appreciate it. But yeah, I, I what's my opinion on it? Well, I, you know... Ugh. I don't know because I don't have the, the medical uh, background to, to, to really discuss why it may or may not be a good idea. And like I say, I know some are not allowed, so um, I, have to, I want to be very careful about what I say. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can't, you can't take them if they're not allowed. It's, it's sort of that simple. So the rules are out there. There's things you can do like uh, to help your rest. Th things like avoiding sugar obviously try before you try and go to bed um chamomile tea stuff like that like sort of more natural ways to calm down and help yourself sleep uh why is that thank you so much for your five pounds super chat really appreciate it why is that says going to be headed off in 30 minutes or so i was wondering if we could get your input and thoughts on that 320 computer fail it's okay if not now this has come up a lot why has been asking very patiently for a long time about this uh so yes of course thank you so much why for again for supporting the channel and the super chat Wysat is talking about an incident that happened uh, a few years ago. Actually, I don't know if you can hear me on the outside view. So I'll move back inside. Just enjoy that livery a little bit. Wysat is talking about an incident. The SmartLink's A320, they were doing base training. So base training is what pilots do when they are uh, getting ready to fly the airliner for the first time with passengers. And they've not flown an airliner before. Now, you don't have to do base training if you've flown heavy aircraft before. But on your first one... Uh, you do so it's often very inexperienced airline pilots flying it they are trained and they're qualified but this is their first time flying the real aircraft that have done all their sim training onto it the type rating and so on they'll be with a very experienced pilot who's doing the training in the left-hand seat uh, and they'll usually have a safety pilot and that's all true in this case they have a safety pilot on the jump seat uh, they also had a, an aviation authority inspector on board as well which is quite interesting civil aviation inspector now it was an hp20 there's a lot to go into as to what happened uh, far more than I could possibly do justice to sitting here um, right now and just sort of chatting with you because I'm uh, I'm not you know not, not formatted for it you could talk about this for hours there's amazing pictures it's on Ab Herald the it's uh, Smartlinks A320 Italian 28th of Feb 2018 basically they had a whole combination of problems as ever it's never just one thing they were flying touch and goes they ended up using a procedure that wasn't quite what airbus now would recommend uh, which is that they were not arming the ground spoilers so they were landing the airplane and the yeah, there's logic behind that which is well why would you need the ground spoilers if you're going to take off again touch and go is when you land roll along the runway apply full power and then take off again it's used for practicing landings quickly without having to stop and taxi around so you on touch and goes you do not deploy reverse thrust but you do arm the ground spoilers these days but you know if, if that wasn't known clearly that wasn't known the reason for arming the ground spoilers is to force the airplane down onto its main gear when it touches down the airbus says this has happened before actually where it lands and if the gear doesn't quite compress properly it can confuse the computers a little bit if the, the wheels spin up but the gear doesn't compress and so on so it's that's why the procedure now is to have the, the spoilers that do come up to allow the gear to compress properly. Anyway, my point being, they also had issue with the trimmable horizontal stabilizer. They think that the oil was perhaps too thick in one of the mechanisms used to maneuver it. As a result of that, unbelievably, they were getting these, or possibly because of that, they were getting cautions, uh, resets on the ELAC, which is the elevator and aileron. ELAC, elevator, aileron, control computer so they were having issues with those and they were being reset occasionally they weren't always getting reset 
what eventually happened was and they didn't know about half of these problems um but they found themselves with a loss of elevator control both elevators during one of the rotations which is an unbelievable situation terrifying situation for any pilot to to be going they were they were way down the runway they were going very fast they were expecting to just rotate like they had done all the other times and what actually happened was nothing the elevators didn't pitch up uh, and they did eventually get the airplane in the air uh the t the trainer took over of course and then flew the airplane round the uh circuit but they had also re-impacted the runway which damaged the engines and they eventually failed and i couldn't quite visualize from the the report i was reading when this all happened uh in what order but the result was the airplane lost uh, an engine and it came to a stop on the air airfield off the runway with a lot of damage uh, there were some minor injuries to two of the seven crew on boards What had happened was they'd lost, basically, with all the resets, the confusion about the spoilers, the problems with the ELACs, they eventually lost uh, the flight control computers for the elevators, and they they had need the elevator, which is an astonishing situation because, of course, there's so much redundancy built in to make sure there's always an elevator available. The pilot flying did, an, or sorry, the, the trainer did an incredible job of quickly adapting to that. They rotated into the air using um, the manual pitch trim, which is that is the official way of doing it right it's the manual pitch trim is your last resort when you've lost the elevators or the flight controls if you lose all the computers it will say man pitch trim only and that's what you do and that is a, a legitimate way of flying the airbus if you need to and that's what they did uh they had to do that quite quickly and there was some oscillation now uh, i've seen this in the sim before where if you give pilots a the manual pitch trim they will start to oscillate very quickly but it's something that they they get to control but it's just because there's huge delay between uh, inputting a pitch trim change and a power change and then the airplane flying where you thought it would go something that, they, that you just have to take some time to get used to but the airplane in this case uh, they actually end up in huge climbs and descents but uh, they got it under control they got the airplane back around and they got it on the ground and yes it went off the runway but considering they were flying as they were they had an engine fire warning and they they were going to shut down an engine but then they didn't because of course they wanted to have the engine control because it's a huge part of how they were maneuvering the airplane at this point it's an a, astonishing situation to find yourself in and not one that is typically trained uh, you don't get trained during your tight rating to fly an airplane in the circuit without uh, without any of the flight controls so yeah remarkable and well done on getting back on the ground safely and no one getting seriously injured you know incredible piece of flying incredible piece of flying so my input on it and my thoughts you know it's alarming it was a it's not if if you're asking am i concerned that it's uh, a repeatable incident well of course anything is repeatable but I think it was a combination of so many things the computer's not being reset the wrong sort of oil and then the procedure being you know not as clear for the crew on that day of the whole arming the spoilers so that's that's the Swiss cheese right that's that model that's all the holes lining up to give us an incident and that's unfortunate but I I think the level of safety isn't compromised by that I don't think the Airbus is an issue because of it either um, I think the flying was incredible what a, a, an alarming situation to find yourself in and fantastic to get it back on the ground like they did um, but yeah remarkable it's a remarkable incident absolutely remarkable one of those things you know so sorry i know it's not a very good answer but uh yeah um that's just where i got to at this point what exact laptop do you have asks cloud action i have a lenovo laptop it has a it's very good it has a i9 processor but the laptop version and a 4080 pro graphics card but the laptop version but it's very good Reza says just come from landing watching landings on heathrow on big jet tv during the storm yes people working hard today as you can see i'm not having to luckily <laughs> Reza says it's a very specific and random question but do you prefer the push talk button on the airbus side stick or the button on the glare shield for the 787 i like the glare shield one on the 787 good question um, 787 we can push this mic switch here uh, and you can also use the switch here on the yoke 
the one on the yoke is not actually as good as the one on the Airbus um, because your interphone on the Boeing is a bit different. You leave it in the flight position and then to transmit, you would flick it up into the transmit position, which no one ever does. So you're just going to use this one or you can use this mic interphone switch down here. Um, but the point is, if you were flying your left hand here, your right hand on the throttles, you could still transmit by flicking that switch down. The only thing about doing that is uh, it would cut you off the flight interphone. So you'd have to then flick it back up to the flight interphone every time you transmit, which is just a clunky system. The reality, of course, is that pilot flying won't usually do the radios. The other pilot does, so it's a non-issue. And yeah, I will nine times out of ten use this switch. In fact, I would say I, ten times out of ten I would use this switch. So yeah, I like it. The side stick one was fine though as well, but it's, it's quite nice keeping your hands away from the flight controls to transmit. Yeah, they indeed, as Wisat says, they had to control the airplane using rudder and trim. It's doable, and it shows it's doable, but yeah, what a thing to do. And I, I don't blame them for not wanting to shut down the engine, even if it said it was on fire, because they just want the thrust from it until they can get the airplane back round on the ground. Do you prefer Ace Ventura 1 or 2? I've only seen one. Even says, I thought it was just a rocker. So that's a spring switch. There's a rocker on the back of the yoke. I'm, I can't believe it's modelled. Uh, I'm not sure if I can even get around there. No, no. It's just a rocker, but it it it's, it has three positions. Off, flight into phone, and transmit. I have seen the Windwing FCU one-to-one. -one. Yes, I have. Yes. Exciting. I've got to say, though, one-to-one -one is quite big. <laughs> I don't know uh, where I'd put it. I suppose I'd put it above my keyboard, but then it would block the eye tracker and I'd lean across the keyboard to do it. I quite like my mini one being just on my left hand here. Gebo, hello to you. Thanks for coming along. Glad you came along. Someone says, do you have a tip on how to fall asleep faster? Sadly not. If anyone has a tip for that, that's a million dollar question. <laughs> Dougal, thanks for coming along. I hope you're doing well. I'm sorry if I didn't say hello earlier. Lorenzo says, I have to go to bed, but first I have a question. How fast do you could you do the 8020 cockpit flow? I don't know. As we, I, I probably, I wouldn't, not very quick these days, as we see when I fly it on the sim, because now I have to think about it. So a little bit slower these days, certainly. Mario says, hello, I'm new to the channel, loving your content. It's really helping me get into flight simulation. Cheers from Spain. Thank you, Mario. Really appreciate it. Glad you're enjoying it. Thanks for coming along today. Sheep counting says to Mango. Indeed, yeah, something like that. Simple games for the brain that can just uh, help it stop thinking about other things. Yeah, can help. Yes, you're right, Dougal. Apologies. What's going on there? Have I missed it? I may have missed that. I'm so sorry, Dougal. Uh, but I'll redo it. Absolutely. That's very, very, very kind. Dougal's very kindly tip. $25.25. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Dougal. Dougal says, wish it could be more, but just a little something to express my gratitude for all you've done over the years. Constantly learning. Dougal, that's far too kind. You've done so much for the channel. Thank you so much. And I really, really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, then that's, that's very, very generous. And I'm so sorry that didn't work the first time. I have trouble with this before but i may have missed the initial run of that but yeah thank you so thank you Google, for the 25 dollars super uh, sorry tip really very really, very kind um yeah so sorry but yeah no it's my pleasure and it's been, been my pleasure since like i say Google got in touch with the channel very early on um and uh has been very supportive and i really really can't thank you enough for, for you know giving a bit of support there at the start because you know these things aren't um aren't easy to to get going with so yeah really appreciate it and thank you again for that that tip very kind dougal has been a huge part of a lot of a lot of uh, flight sim channels as i'm sure many of you know uh 
Uh, voice there says, do you want to say something about how to detect GPS spoofing and what to do? <laughs> For now, no. I think I'll leave that one for now. Just because... Yeah, I'll leave that one for now. Um, it's annoying, <laughs> GPS spoofing, obviously. But you don't need to worry as a passenger. Uh, the airplane doesn't need GPS. We have fantastic navigation systems on board that can update using radio beacons. And it doesn't even need to do that anymore. They're so precise over such a long t amount of time. The GPS is just another thing that feeds into it and is not required. So yeah, that's what I'll say for now. Thank you, Dougal. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Razor's got a question there about a medical condition and whether it would affect your ability to get a class one. I, I can't answer that question, I'm afraid. I'm, I'm not qualified. Uh, definitely just speak to your civil aviation authority and uh, they, they, they are the only ones that will know. Yeah. And people people fight things, you know. If there's if if it genuinely isn't likely to affect your ability to fly an airplane, then people do have success in getting conditions approved that weren't previously. So you know, it's worth worth asking around as well. Uh, would you ever go back to flying an aerobody? Yes, I would. Dorinas asks, "Would you ever go back to flying an aerobody?" And I absolutely would. No doubts there. I loved it. I love flying, flying around a lot. Long haul has amazing benefits as well, but absolutely, I would, I would fly on a narrow body again. It's not really the airplane we're talking about; it's the lifestyle there, isn't it? It's would you fly short haul or long haul again? Question about Le Lewis going to Ferrari in twenty twenty two five. Uh, yep, good on him. I hope he enjoys it. I hope it goes well. I really hope it goes well. I really, 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 really hope it goes well. <laughs> Uh, given given where Mercedes are and Ferrari are as well, it looks like a good move at the moment. But we'll see how it looks next year. Because you know, the year before Mercedes had their fall from the top, they also looked like a very good team, didn't they? So yeah, they were having good results. So yeah, I mean they are a good team, but you know what I mean. They were look like a winning team, and now of course they they aren't in that position anymore. I will never forget Abu Dhabi 2021, <laughs> like many of us. Ash Taylor, thank you so much for the 20 Australian dollar super chat. Really appreciate it. Ash says, thanks for the great content. Have inspired uh, have inspired me to start down the path of in real life training. Uh, though at 34 years old, don't know the likelihood of commercial flying in the future. Keep up the great work. That's so kind of you. Thank you so much for the uh, for the super chat. Thank you for the support, Ash. I, again, it always amazes me when I hear that people have been inspired to, to fly airplanes in the real world because of my channel, which is it's quite an amazing thought. Um, I mean fantastic just enjoy it uh, 34 years old is not too late to go and become uh, an airline pilot uh, it, it just isn't so that's up to you but yeah enjoy it enjoy it remember people come out of the military and so on and then become commercial pilots uh, it, it's it's totally not not shocking so that's where you want to go but something to consider because you may have another career that pays better or that gives you stability that you need and the lifestyle that you need but fantastic for the um for the flying in the real world anyway and thanks so much again for that super chat very very kind really appreciate it Dougal says uh, i know a guy that starts at 47 there you go Piano Lerner says, have you read Skyfaring by Mark Van Honacker? He's a 787 pilot for BA. He describes place lag, which I think is a nice term for that feeling of arriving somewhere completely different. Yes, I've read at least half of that book. I read it when I was on um, when I was flying short haul, so I should read it again now, actually, now that I'm on long haul, because it's, it's obviously more long haul related. But he does talk about place lag. I do remember that bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't... I know. I know what he's talking about. 
I, I think of it as time travel. That's what surprises me the most. That you can be on the other side of the planet in such a short space of time. I, I, it feels to me like time travel. And that's where it catches me out. It's like, I can't believe this time tomorrow I'll be in on the other side of the planet, you know. Spiffing Rich says, also really love your content. Your tutorials on the Airbus have helped me lots in my sim hobby. Thank you very much, Spiffing Rich. And thank you, Sim. Glad you enjoyed it. Happy Let says, uh, so happy you're an F1 guy. Last GP was insane. Yes, I saw bits of that. Yeah. Made a bit of a change, at least, for the first time in three years. <laughs> I am sorry about the way the chat is being fed to me. Let me see. If I can change the order. Because I'm getting a lot of um, messages missed here. We're both Merc fans, says George, indeed. Reza says, how stressed do you get on a really hard landing? Or are you super good at keeping calm? So I assume uh, Reza, Reza means... or it, Reza has said there a hard landing which I'm going to take to mean uh, a difficult challenging landing so no you don't get super stressed your stress levels go up sure when you have something really challenging going on such as strong winds snow fog uh, or a different difficult approach but you don't get overly worked up because you know you are trained to do it and if it is that stressful then don't do it go somewhere where it isn't too stressful you, that's basically what happens um, but there are times where you really you're, you're descending in somewhere and the thunderstorms are flashing away and you know this is going to be one of those one of those ones you remember for a while <laughs> um, but you don't you don't show it you know if you're reaching the point where that's becoming an issue then you shouldn't be doing the approach no that's all part of our ability to manage our own stress and uh, communicate properly and so on yeah George Lumpkin. Wow, George Lumpkin left London job to go freelance, uh, devote time to training this summer. Follow your dreams, my friend. I may not make it to the cockpit, but people like 327 feel like keeps going. <laughs> That's very kind of you, George. And good luck. Good luck with all your dreams and, and passions and adventures. Um, yeah, it's a it's a decision for people to make. Um, yeah. It gets harder as you get older to take that, that risk, I think, of becoming a pilot, but it's it's there's nothing wrong with doing it in your 30s yeah in my opinion no guarantees and obviously depends where you are in the world and so on and some cadet schemes may have age limits and so on but still Lauren B says baseball season about to start ever had enough time on American overnights to catch a game not baseball uh, basketball I've become a big fan of basketball something that we don't really do much of in England or I haven't seen much of in England but uh, or the UK but yeah basketball in america is fantastic fun baseball i have yet to see i've heard it's a different atmosphere <laughs> a bit longer <laughs> with a type rating i can fly all of the 78 variants and the triple seven variants as well uh what's that says why is it not allowed for pilots to laser their eyes i'm not sure if it isn't allowed i thought it was allowed i don't know that it's a good question but i don't know i'm afraid There you go, as George says, having very supportive fiancé helps. <laughs> Epilet says, Ferrari are doing so well at the moment. As a Ferrari supporter, I'm sure Hamilton moving will be a new beginning for him. Always loved him as an amazing driver and great person. I th yeah, I agree. I think Lewis is a great driver. He's demonstrated that over and over again in very challenging situations, even if people think he complains too much. But uh, I think he, I don't think he does. I think he works very hard. And I like what he does around the sport. And I like that he's, he says the stuff that needs to be said. Um, and he, he's always... Every, every win Lewis got, I felt like he really wanted it, really worked for it. And I, I like that as well. But, you know, everyone's got opinions. It's, it's sport, isn't it? Lorenby says, Wouldn't have been too much baseball during your time in the 7-8 so far. Can't get into watching basketball too much. Scoring a basket doesn't feel as special as a run, goal, touchdown. Fair. Um, 
what I would say about basketball, Lauren, if you, I'm, I'm sure you've seen it anyway, but when, uh, I know what you mean, the, the points just sort of flow a little bit more, but sometimes in basketball, when they, the, they, they get everything right and then there's a slam dunk at one end, it's fantastic. Real excitement. And I just like the, the music and the vibe in the stadium. It's quite relaxed, very relaxed. I, I like the friendly atmosphere around American sports, which is not what I was expecting. I was expecting it to be a little bit, uh, more intense but it was actually it's quite quite friendly and nice and i enjoy it did you see the new wingplex simulations full fcu uh win wing i have not seen uh, i've seen the announcement yet yeah, the full size fcu uh simply tom says do you end up doing much triple seven flying or is it on your license just because it's a similar course exactly tom it's on my license because it's similar it's very it's not very common for pilots to fly both uh, day to day. Better check on the airplane. We are in full podcast mode here, aren't we? Uh, right. There's Barcelona. 320 miles. Oh, we need to get things prepared. So let's work out our arrival. I'm loving the chat with everyone. I'm so sorry, but yeah, I must. Uh, I must move on briefly. <laughs> so we had the Laura's arrival. In via Lores, so I'm just going to connect Ibram to Lores. That's for zero six. Now I don't think that's the run we're going to use. Let me just check what the wind's doing there. Ba -ba -ba. Uh, yeah, one nine zero at four. So it's suddenly. So we're going to be on the southwesterly runways. So let's do the Laura's one puppet. So departure arrival. RLS Zulu will be the most common. And um, we'll do two, four, left. RLS Zulu. Ah, oh, I miss doing this sort of thing. Uh, we'll do Laura's via. So Laura's arrival. One papa. And then we'll take the What how have I fallen for this again? <laughs> that is completely the wrong set of charts. I don't don't know why I keep doing that. <laughs> Laura's on Papa is there, so that's good. And then we go to the approach. Ah oh, yes, so we do two four left. So the via is via Papa Oscar Sierra. Pause. Yeah, perfect. So scroll through. Remember, just a puzzle. Oh, it doesn't have it. Why not? Certainly not the CDP. Pause or Bavum. Oh, we'll go by Bavum then. Because the, we've already got the pause as part of what we're doing. Right, there we go. So let's go to plan. If I go to legs, it will stay there and we can just check that. So I zoom in. Good stuff. And then we just step through. Do, 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 do. Pause, Bavum. Perfect. So there you go. Pause to Bavum. I'll connect it myself and then down the RLS. It's got the restrictions in as well. So execute that. Delete that. Execute. Well, I'd like it to fly over, really. Uh, and then page one. And let's just connect these up. Executes. There we go. And if we look through, it doesn't have the correct restrictions on it. So I want to arrive at pause. Minimum hold of 5,000. It would be 9,100 feet. Perfect. 250 knots as well. It's at 240. Now, the 78 does do this. It plans these really, really slow descent speeds. 240 knots in descent is too slow. I don't like that. So I'm going to do... Oh, there we go. Econ speed 8, 4, 3, 1, 5. Okay, that's all right. So it's done 240 below 10. Sorry. Yeah, the 78 does 240 below 10. That's fine. But it can, it can actually descend much slower than that sometimes the entire way, which I, sometimes you just want to increase. We're at cost next 93 though, so actually it's not too bad. 
Uh, right, so... Pause, Bavum, Obum. 4.5 at Bavum. Above 4,500 feet. Let's just check. Bavum, 4,500 feet, yes. And then Obumu at 2,500 feet or above. That's the initial fix. That's the platform. So when we begin our descent, I'm just going to put 2,500 in the window, unless we have air traffic control interfering. Uh, set the Q&H, and then just descend down like that. That's the plan. Good. Let's go back to map. Zoom out. There's a top of descent marker. So we got a little bit of time. It's about 160 miles away. Let's just do some other things. It's a longish runway. Three thousand meters, yeah. I mean it's gonna be the classic auto brake three. And we'll do a flat twenty-five landing. Uh, idle reverse. If I go into here, let's check the weight. So 163.3. We're landing with how much fuel are we landing with? 8.4. We currently have 10.3, so two tons to lose. So 160 uh 1.3. Gives us the weight. 25 into there. Five knot correction. Glide slope on. That's all looking good. We'll put the minimo in. Ah, oh, let's do four lefts. We're a Cat D airplane, unbelievably. So 250 feet. I can't stand doing this. It's just terrible. It's terrible in this. It's terrible in the real airplane. Ah, oh, just. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's even worse in the sim because, of course, at least in the cruise, it's not too bad. But if your mouse moves a millimeter, you can see me, the barrow down here is what I'm trying to change. Ah, oh, I just... <laughs> possibly the worst switch on the airplane. Luckily, it only says it once a flight. Uh, and the Q&H, let me just grab the Q&H. La Palma. 1006 so we can back set that on here much higher than it is in London which has got this low pressure storm coming in lots of scrolling to be done yeah I'm not a fan of these two and they also are identical so it's very easy to do the wrong one but there we go uh, 1006 so we've got the minima, got the performance, got the 1006. We've talked about how we're going to fly. We're going to do VNAV path. We've got terrain to the north, so we can't go below 7 until we get a bit further in. So we'll follow the procedure almost exactly. And then down to 2,500 feet at the Bumu. Speeds, we'll let it descend at 240 knots for the last stage. And then we'll just slow it down ourselves as we get onto this leg towards the Bumu. Uh, and then join the ILS. It's 109.3, course 237. So Navrad. 109.3, course 237, auto-tuned. Looking pretty reasonable. Um, yeah. Here's the hills for Barcelona. Get past this, and then we're we're starting our descent. Got the minima. Uh, after landing, we're just going to vacate right up into the airports. Hopefully off at Sierra 2. Idle reverse. Wind from the left, pretty breezy. So for landing, it's going to be 30 feet. Start the flare. Use the right rudder, and then left aileron to, uh, to keep that wing down as the wind will try and lift it up. Right. We'll do a quick recall as the... T oh, yeah, it's complaining about the checklist now, but at least the, the temperature in the airplane seems to have recovered. Yeah, that's calmed down nicely. And fuel-wise, 10.1 tons, landing with 8, that's plenty. We set our reserves about 5 tons, so we're well ahead of the game. We we took two, uh, 1,800 extra, and then we've, we've obviously saved a little bit as well somehow. Out of interest, can we do a step climb? No, it doesn't want to do a step, so we can't see it. Ah oh, well, it can't. We doesn't want to go to four three yet. Right, apologies for that. I uh, I missed a lot of chat in the meantime. Are you thinking about making tutorials of the PMD triple seven? I absolutely am, Frank. Indeed, I am. James F92 says, hey, first time catching your live stream. Excellent content. And you introduced the A320 to me and now feel fairly confident with it. Thanks so much for your work. Keep it up. You're very welcome, James. Thanks for coming along. Thank you for saying so. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, Weister says, I came over this when I applied at Lufthansa. And DLR does not allow laser eyes. There you go. Interesting. 
Frank says, used to see baseball in Japan, but never watched it while I lived in the US. No, I haven't seen it, but I, in summer, I, I would like to. Epidet says, I'm just about to start training for my gliding license. I have always loved your content and no doubt without you, I would never have thought about flying. I am surely going to try and get a job now. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah, fantastic. And good luck with the gliding. I've never done gliding, but I'd love to try it. Lauren B says, the fun of baseball is mostly just bantering with your fellow fans, much like playing the sport itself. You're standing around not doing much 90% of the time, full sprint in the last 10. Yes, that's what I've heard. <laughs> I have heard that about uh, baseball. Indeed, podcast is now over. It's exactly right, Mango. Communicate with chat, aviate, navigate, says railwork. Indeed, yeah. That's the way the crew seems to go on the channel. Nice view here. They get much nicer weather, of course, than the, uh, the UK. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Again, Microsoft Flight Simulator working its magic. Hector asks, how is weight figured out for the flight? Uh, is it based off Avengers... Uh, av average number by the number of passengers and associated luggage or something else yes exactly it's based on an assumed weight unless there's reason to do otherwise normally that's what's dead answers yep wide rumble says an americans complain about soccer being slow and not much happening <laughs> there you go uh spiffing says how do you select ILS zulu versus yankee or x-ray uh, the zulu is by definition the most commonly used one Otherwise, there'll be reasons such as nav aid's broken or something or time of day for them to use the other ones. So, yeah. Some airports don't have a Zulu, which is a bit confusing. But, yeah, in theory, the Zulu should be the, the normal one. Dog Tag says, it's so much better to go to an American baseball game in person versus watching. Yeah, I, I can believe that. That's the same with, like, the, the, the basketball. You know, it, it's fun being in the stadium. Is there a difference between deleting the blank in the legs page and overwriting it with the next waypoint? No. Simply Tom, no. I don't think so. Norm is a Giants fan. There you go. Uh, and Lauren V raises a good point here. Um, this is the other thing. Gi Giants and Diamondbacks are rivals, but we can speak civilly. I'd have a hard time speaking kindly to an Arsenal or Chelsea fan. But this is what I liked about the American sport that I have seen, is the way that, you know, it was just like everyone was quite relaxed. I felt like I could wear the away team's jumper or hat or something and it wouldn't be an issue. There was even a little bit of, you know, clapping for them when they did something. It, it didn't feel as intense as the football or soccer games that I've been to in the UK certainly can uh, there just wasn't that animosity it was sort of a yeah it was I, I, that's what I really liked about it just felt more relaxed that's the only way I can describe it really ah tickets are expensive yeah for NFL I believe tickets can be very expensive um, obviously um, and it does depend sometimes basketball is alright it's the only one I've been to can you dim the 787 cockpit window like the passenger window or it's still mechanical shade? Great question. Sadly, you cannot dim them. I so wish you could. And I sort of, I, I, I live under the belief that Boeing was thinking of having them dimmable uh, and then it didn't happen. Because what we actually have to do is, uh, there's a rail, these clips here, um, there's two there. You have to take these visors out, clip them on one by one. They're all awkward shapes and they sort of flop around a bit. And they aren't very strongly tinted and you have to put those up here and the sun still shines through them ah uh, yeah it's crazy you have a big sunshade that fits in this window <sighs> yeah yeah there's one that clips onto the hard as well <laughs> it's just this is almost funny if i didn't have to sit looking at it all the time Uh, Dougal, no, I don't think I did do the circle down 360 Corsica. I don't think so, no. I've done some fun approaches onto Corsica, but not. I don't think I've done that circle, no. Mm. 
How does RNAV work and is it commonplace compared to ILS? Asks Sphere. Uh, RNAV is simply a, a way for the airplane to, it knows where it is, it knows where the waypoints are. So if you tell it to fly via those waypoints and you tell it what altitude to be at those waypoints, why can't it fly an approach like that? So that's what RNAV approaches are basically. Um, in the 787 there's two ways of doing it you can leave it in L and VNAV and it will fly the approach you just have to lower this down to the minima and then set it back above you which I think is silly but that's the way it's done uh, and the alternative is the uh, Ian integrated approach navigation where it effectively turns it into as long as it's a straight line it turns it into a ILS sort of like the FLS system in the A320 which the 78 already had so yeah ILS is a more common still. Good, good, good. We are getting there. We get over these hills, get out over the water, and we begin our descent. I chose this route because I wanted to use this livery, so that was the, the main criteria. And then I thought, well, uh, this would be a tip. Used to be 767s seven, back in the day, so this remains me living out that fantasy of being as close as possible to a uh, 757. <laughs> Antonin says, how do you like the long haul life compared to the short medium haul? It's a good question. Amazing, amazing opportunities. Uh, and I've seen more of the world in the last year than, you know, in my entire life before that. And that's just a fact. Been to countries I'd, I'd never been to and places I would never have had the chance to visit. Uh, the lifestyle, though, if you once you look through that, like I said earlier has the potential to be tiring to a degree you just never knew and that that hurts sometimes and that's why I won't do this forever I hope I hope to get the opportunity to go back and do short haul as well do you prefer Jepson or Lido charts interesting one I think it's just whatever you're most used to at the time but I like I like both. I do like the leader charts because they show the terrain and the color and the scale is all. I think that's nice. I think that helps. Froggy says just researching about Ian as you said that what actually is it? So Ian is just a way. I don't know. I need to experiment with this airplane more to see if it can do it. Ian is a way to make it fly an RNAV approach like an ILS. So instead of having to leave it in LNAV VNAV, level off set the minima below you in the altitude window it's, it's much more complex than the airbus uh, but you can avoid all of that you just get effectively a glide it's not the glide slope it's a glide path displayed up here on the pfd so it looks like an ILS, and you can press localize it and then approach and it's not localized it's final approach course so you, you go find the approach course uh, and then approach which will then give you the glide path it, it's a video that's a video i, I need to show you and i don't know if this this working title does it i wouldn't be surprised if it does given that how good their hud and things are i hope it works because ian is a fantastic feature but we shall see mitchell says what would you say is the most efficient way of revising aircraft systems and do you have any book recommendations for the airbus or boeing uh i don't have any book recommendations basically you're going to have the fcom so you, what I've done before, if I have a specific reason to revise all the systems is, and it can be hard, like if you're, if you're starting a type rating or something, it can be hard uh, to, to know where to start. So it's often best just to follow your instructor's advice, obviously. But one thing you can do is, um, I, I would draw up like a spreadsheet on the times I've had to do this. Uh, and have like each section so fuel air hydraulics electrics and so on and then each section on the spreadsheet 
I'd have the, the so that'd be like the columns, and then the row would be uh, FCOM, FCTM, QRH, OMA, OMB, whatever. And then I would fill in the square once I've read and you know digested that section. The biggest one usually being the FCOM system description for that system. And that way I just could keep track of how far I've got because it feels overwhelming otherwise. So I just start with an empty spreadsheet and then just tick off each box really. Uh, that was one way of doing it and I just sort of make my own notes. So that's one way. If That's a way of sort of cramming it in but um, it can be very hard. So if you're hopefully your ground school instructors will have the best advice for you really that's what it's what you really need Dan Yale says when you go back to narrowbody would it be ever spoke I don't know that's that's out of my hands and hopefully a little while in the future still Epilet says are you familiar with MH370 and if so what do you think yeah I've seen see they're getting a lot of media coverage lately um a lot because obviously it's the anniversary uh you know, and it's like, well, it's the anniversary, and then we have a documentary comes out about it, and then we have a lot of YouTube content suddenly comes out about it, of course. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen any of the, the new stuff. I don't know if there's any new information in there. I assume not, because until I get an official report telling me what happened, I'm not going to listen to uh, uh, too much noise about it, as it were. Um, so I just don't know. I just don't know. Man, she says, how is your first officer taking to the 787? Uh, she doesn't seem to like it. She hasn't attended many 787 streams. I can say that. It is mind-boggling that 777 can just disappear. It is. I think that's what shocked everybody. No problem, Mitchell. See if it works for you. Just see if that works for you. That's what I've done if I've needed to. Matthew says, hello, I've loved your 787 tutorials. Very helpful. Will you be making a descent and landing video? Thank you, Matthew. And yes, the descent and landing video is made, but just needs to be put together and put online. So that's coming very soon. Thank you so much, though. Really appreciate it. Very kind. Now, look at this. Let's, let's let the airplane have no excuse. MCP altitude is set to uh, cruise, set the low altitude. Thank you, Boeing. We will. I'm going to set... What am I doing on that? I've got my little window. I'm going to all the way down to... 2,500. Why not? Let's let the airplane do the hard work. That's the platform altitude. So, getting ready now. 2,500. The airplane has its profile worked out. It's got all the data. Actually, I'm going to remove the data. It will keep the restrictions, like 4,500 above. Um, but yeah, it's going to... Um, this way... It, it, those time the data shows the times which is useful on long haul when you're trying to work out when fuel checks and stuff will be or when you're going to enter oceanic airspace that sort of stuff but it's not so useful in the descent it's just clutter uh, something else to point out is that we need to set the Q&H we can't do that yet while we're still in the cruise but once we start down when you no longer have any restrictions based on the flight level we can swap over to the Q&H so that would be immediately because we only have one restriction and it's based on altimeter that's uh, right, QNH. QNH down in Palma, it's 1006. Lauren Reed says, First officer has taken to choosing the rests, first rest since the time change. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> She's taken to all three rests. She doesn't give any of us a chance. There we go, idle, we have speed, so down we go just as we coast out there's Barcelona down there again Marks of Flight Simulator absolutely gorgeous Matthew says when I push the out knob in it just seems to level off the plane for some reason hmm when are you pushing it in is that when you're trying to remove restrictions and get it to to if it's I would normally only push it in if it's already leveled off or I'm trying to clear out a restriction. Like you, you see earlier in this stream when we'd left Gatwick, I had to do it there to clear through until it would restart its climb. Tobago says, what's the highest auto brake setting you've used on the 787? I think I've used four. I can't remember now. Thank you, Epilet. Yes, if you are watching and enjoying, do please leave a like. It makes a big difference. Thank you. 
All right, that's it. We're on the way down. Uh, we can set the Q and H. Just click that, and it swaps over. Now it's going to have to rethink its profile. I think it's a bit wow. high now. So we have two ways of seeing that. This is showing us that we are above profile. It's down here. We also have this more traditional Boeing display. This has been around since seven five days. Uh, it says we're thirteen hundred feet high. And you can see here the number's getting bigger, so it's just getting higher and higher. Now, why that is, I don't know, but that's actually spot-on accurate to the real airplane. It does this all the time. just gets itself high and fast straight away. So soon enough, it will come up with a message saying, unable speed. Uh, you're going to need to do the um, speed brake. Ah, no, it won't. What it's doing is it's in Venus speed, but it can't actually get down to the um, altitude. So we're not in that bracket. So I need to get into VNF pass. So I'm going to put the speed brake out. Very, very effective speed brake. When you deploy the speed brake in the 787, again, I talk about this in my descent tutorial coming soon. <laughs> um, you have to be very slow because it initially gives you a bit of a bump when it deploys. And then if you just go like this, you really feel it like the airplane just drops it's amazingly powerful very good speed brakes there we go it's just like diving out i mean they cover so much of the wing so once it gets back into vnf path it should then go into the like the airbus give us a bit of a band of speed it's willing to fly to try and keep the profile Dougal says i keep getting high and fast and descent in the phoenix since block two ah interesting yeah i oh, would we'll, we'll fly that on stream soon and see see what it does i imagine that when tui operated the 787 at bristol 2000 meters the braking on that after landing must have been sense yeah they probably would have done max auto which is not as strong as max manual there we go speed in a path back in the bracket and now it has the speed bracket and again that's pretty accurate to the real airplane suddenly adding thrust and things like that yeah so you can just close those yourself you know you can override it And sometimes pilots will do that. You'll see them because the airplane can be so slow at bringing the power back off again. Um, you'll see pilots to help it because it does it so slowly and then gets high. So you'll see pilots actually close them for the airplane. Anyway, there we go. Speed brakes are now in. It's doing okay, but you can see here it's starting to get fast already, even though it's pretty much spot on the profile. So I'm expecting that message soon. George says, Do we still operate a 787 at EGGD? I saw one with my own eyes last week. Fantastic. There you go. Kimmy Reichen says, that descent rate indeed. Totally normal on an airplane. Remember, we're doing Mach decimal 8 still. And we are doing 330 knots. We're fast. So, yeah. No surprise. I have flown on the 757 as a passenger many times. Including in this livery. I think it was a 75300 in this livery. Simply Tom says best decision uh, best deceleration in a 787 I felt was landing at Newark on a 6700 feet runway proper push against your seatbelt kind of deceleration. Yeah, so to disconnect the auto brake, you have to use the pedals. There you go. Here's the message. Unable to maintain speed. So what it will do now is it should let itself get high, uh, although it appears to just be overspeeding. So let's get the speed brakes out. Um, yeah, so... Um, you'd use the pedals to disconnect the auto brake system, but it, they can be quite sticky. And when you do finally break through, it can suddenly bite. And I find that... Compared to the Airbus, it's a trickier finesse to get the airplane to um, to disconnect the auto brakes smoothly. It's harder to do than it was in the Airbus, certainly. 
Look at this. You, you, what you want ideally is a beautiful descent where you just have idle thrust and no speed brakes. But on the 787, it's just very hard. Normally, I would use the excuse that, well, the airplane's just too efficient. So it, it doesn't descend like modern, uh, lots of other airliners. They will descend an, uh, a steeper angle. They've got more drag. The 787 is just very fast. It's heavy. It's quick. And it's efficient. It doesn't have the same amounts of drag. So actually, it finds flying the same restrictions in a descent more challenging. However, there are no restrictions for now. It's just flying its normal descent profile, and yet it's still not managing. <laughs> We're doing 340 knots now, and it's still getting high. And this, again, is pretty accurate to the real airplane. I'm glad to see it, actually. I think the Horizon has more drag than this, whereas this is, this is pretty sp spot on. It, it just gets itself high. Um, so, yeah, I, I've got no excuse for this one, I'm afraid. So Mango says, 757-300 is comically long. I think the 200 is the right size. Yeah, agreed. In fact, that's one of the few airplanes where I think the, the short one looks the nicest. Binette says, question, how does the trim function on the 787? Every time I take off, my trim somehow always goes to 100% up. Typically what happens when I pause? Ah, if you yes, if you pause, it will. That's a function of um, just the way the sim is set up. What's happening is the flight control system. If I was to pause, so you're using live active pause, aren't you? Um, I've I've had this before when making videos and even the screenshot for this video. The flight control systems of the the sim are still running in the background, so they see it not responding and they keep exaggerating their input. And I've had it trim all those up as well. So no, the real airplane wouldn't do that. It's just a very normal trim system. The only thing it does have is trim to speed, but I'll talk about that in another video later. But yeah, no, what's happening to you is just because you're pausing, I'm afraid. Right, 15,000 feet. Let's do the, should have done the descent check before we started down. Recall, we've checked. Uh, we've just got this FMC message again. Descent speed is unable. That's fine. It's trying to come back to 240 knots now in the preparation for the uh, 10,000 feet. Auto break three. Landing data VRF 25 and 140. Minimums 250. Approach briefing completed. Descent check is complete. Now we are catching up our friend here. So I am going to slow down now because they're only 10 miles ahead. So we go full speed break. The live, the green banana works well as well in this one, which I do like. So 4,500 above at Fathom. All looking pretty reasonable. You see how this is just such a, a lovely machine to operate. If you think about the amount of things we've actually had to do <laughs> to get to this point. So I don't mind it getting a little bit high on approaches if it, if it wants to, given how nice it is otherwise. Ah, no, I'm not sure what speed it's going for there. No problem. I'm going to intervene. I'm going to set... Oh, we'll just do 250 for now. So I've opened the speed window. We can stay in VNAV. But what I've done now is I've opened the speed window. So it's going to keep the 250 knots. And it will do what it needs to to do that. So I've messed up its plan. But its plan wasn't very good. The green banana is showing me when I'm going to level off. So if I want to demonstrate that, if I press vertical speed, it tells me when I'm going to reach this altitude. And it's a very live and dynamic thing. So at 1400 feet per minute, we'll reach it there. If I was to wind this back, it disappears off into the distance. And if I dive it down, and it will move in. So that's what the green banana is telling us. So 2500 feet is where we want to be at a boomu. So really, all I need to do is line that up with a, a boomu. Of course, not so easy when you haven't got any turns in. So the VNAV profile has that in there, except for the fact I want to take over the speed. There we go. Hold VNAV speed. Hold VNAV path. So hold means the thrust levers are no longer connected to the gears. Oh, no, they've re-engaged now. It's in speed mode. Yeah, that's what I expect it to be in. <laughs> 
What aircraft do you remember the most fondly from the training? Probably the Tomahawk. Can't wait for Just Flight's one. Right, coming at 10,000 feet. We would have already done this. Actually, you do that a bit earlier on a big airplane like this. It takes longer. There's you know, different sorts of seats, people standing around, more people going to the toilet. They've been asleep, duvets and things, lots to move. So typically earlier than 10,000 feet, that's more of a short haul thing. Although if you'd use this airplane on a short haul route, maybe you'd do it about here. Uh, and we'll get the landing lights on. Don't need any of those. Good. Speed in a path again. There's our colleague right in front of us. How far are they? They're nine miles. So we are catching them. I'm going to slow down to our clean speed. There. 220 knots. And I'm just going to help it out. We'll slow down right away. Because I'm a little bit concerned about that spacing now. Palmer Airport coming into view over here. Wouldn't surprise me if air traffic actually demanded we slow down. We still can't see the ILS, but I can see IPAL 237 course over here. Waiting for it to become identified with the DME. So let's go to flap one. And now I can wind that speed back to the one speed. Remember, unlike the Airbus, we must put the flap out first. So there's the one. And I'm going to use those speed brakes. They're very powerful, so they're great for this sort of situation. I can use them to force the airplane to slow down while still maintaining the profile. <laughs> Magic Man says you did a tight rating on a cruise missile. It's I, I call it a freight train. It, it comes steaming in. It's got so much energy and speed. And it just doesn't have the drag. It's, it's a fantastic machine. Now that's not quite right. That looks a little bit funny. But still it is green. Right, speed brake going away. Let's line up a heading bug. Always going to line that up. Oh, so good having that at the fingertips instead of through the screen. Simply Tom says, What do you think about flying wide bodies on short haul routes? My flight school colleague accepted a job at Air Tanker on the 330 for European flights. Yeah, I think that'd be great fun. They're very comfortable airplanes and they're quicker. Um, yeah, and they're, they're, they tend to be just as simple to set up. Speed mode, and here's our localizer starting to appear. We should command us approach checklist as well. Oh, it's really not happy, is it? Let's just override all the other checklists. Approach, our team says we've done. Approach checklist completes. Next is landing. Good. One that's not 7,000 feet, 23 miles. So we're on the right profile and the speed's under control. Pretty happy with that. It's warning me about the speed brake, so I can get rid of that. That's idle. Calling your front, still nine miles. Flight dispatch, it's really good to see you. Yeah, Kuro is flying nicely. Really nicely. Enjoying it, actually. See our colleague in front now. I did for All a second the traffic, there. Uh, There's a glide up just beneath us. two, four left. Uh, one, four miles out. Easy, eight, zero, nine, five. There you go. See, that's our colleague easy in front of us. Let me get the recording software up and running. Three two three five five. Oh, we just got a call from air traffic. That's not. <laughs> that's not good timing. There's our colleague coming in behind us as well. One three two three five five. Cleared to Nice via the uh, Dolan Five Quebec departure. Right. Five, I'm going to let it. I'm going to convert over to heading mode now. Uh, Actually, no, I'm not. No, I'm going to leave it to do it. Open seven nine eight Alpha, uh, read that correct. Um, since there's a traffic on the right, that's uh, on the runway, so hot position, call you. This can get very busy now. We'll check in if we get a moment. I do keep my hand on the speed brake if I'm using it, yes. Well, in 1517, yes. you are clear to your destination by adding 5 correct departure at a front right. 2 for left. There we go. We're on the glider. We're on the low glider. We're getting a bit faster. Put the speed brake out again. Already cleared into our destination, Dallin 5. There's a turn. That should intercept the low glider. Traffic's in front of us. 
Wind one five one seven rebuck correct. Wind one two zero degrees. On the left five, side, correction. lock. With one two zero degrees. And notice that it automatically, uh, NH, wait, uh, only when you do the lock zero, and lock becomes active, does it bring the heading bug round to the inbound inset. So inbound uh, course, isn't that good? What a good feature. I love that that's modelled. Speed we now par. And now we're on the glide slope with 5,000 feet out. I'm just going to arm the approach. Speed, lock, glide slope. Let's go flat five. I want a bit of drag as we start heading down the slope. Good evening to you. Runway 24 left, seven miles out, fully established. Easy 8095. Easy 8095. Let's slow down. We know it's getting busy. Uh, wind uh, 210 degrees, 07 out, KNH 1006, runway 24 left, clear to land. QNH 1006, uh, clear to land, easy 8095. Control JMC 346, runway 24 left at Palmer, 15 miles out. Runway 0073, Barcelona, good day, identify. Uh, expect Charlie Lee Michael to whisk the transition for the ILS Okay, 180 knots flat 5 it's pretty sustainable I should be able to put the speed brakes away now and just let the drag from those flaps do their magic we've got a strong headwind here as well so relatively shallow descent rate but I can see here, see that speed tape, that rectangle here? That's showing me that my speed's increasing above the target. And this accelerometer is above the wing, so it's telling me that I'm still accelerating. I need it to go below the wing now, and that will bring that speed back down. So if I put the speed brake out, you'll see it drop below the wing, and now that rectangle will reduce and reduce and reduce. And reduce, and reduce. So I'm going to take a bit more flat. Let's go flat 15. Now the 8 has a 15 but no 10. So 15, I'm going to widen the speed back. Let's put it back to the 15 speeds. Why not? Just so the engines don't spool up. And fingers crossed, that extra drag, it will start to calm down again. So slowly bring the speed brake in. See a huge tape, but that's still below us. Ah, but no, if I put it away, the airplane still accelerates. I feel like it should manage without speed brake, but still. Ooh. There we go. Now the nose is coming up. It is still decelerating, so it's going the right way for us. Right, we're on the glide slope. I'll just put the gear in altitude in. It's in the window. 10 miles out, 3,200 feet, looking good. Still trying to accelerate every now and then. There are, there are these lumps on the ground, so the wind will accelerate over those, and it can cause this. Oh, we're doing a very efficient, well, nice and idle approach. It is a strong headwind, indeed. Is the capturing the glide slope below you except for 178 compared to being not good on the 73 and 320? It's a, if the glide slope is beneath you, you can capture it. As long as you're already on the localizer, then yeah, you can capture the glide slope beneath you. It's a, it's, it's a procedure in the 320 and it's something that you have to do sometimes. And yeah, you can do it on this as well. Right, radio trim is alive. I'm going to put the gear down because we are sitting fast. So gear down. And you can arm the speed brake. There's speed brake arms. There, you want that message. Don't be forward into putting it here or it slightly too far and it's actually deployed. You need it to say speed brake armed up there. Right, let's go flaps 20. Which is basically the same as 15. And we go 25. Barcelona control, runway uh, vacated, holding on at Sierra 2. Speedbird, uh, not Speedbird, correction, easy 8095. Right, speed brakes are armed, uh, the gears down, back at approach speed, nose, actually they've got the pitch just right on this model, one degree, perfect, love it. Did the landing checklist. 
Speed brake, landing gear, flaps. Yeah, check this is complete. Look at that. There's roll up flare arm, land three. So it's ready for an auto land. We don't have to engage the autopilot separately like on the Airbus. We're not going to get a word in with their traffic here. So I'm just going to carry on. Because, I mean, it's just it's just a bit late in the day, really, isn't it? Uh, Hotel Eco uh, Romeo, Barcelona Control, Gref, Crack 6234, confirm established 2 4 left. Established 2 4 right, say again. Squawk. Uh, Hotel Eco Romeo, Squawk 6234, runway in use 2 4 left 4, arrivals uh, confirm able for touch step, runway 2 4 left. Um, I firm, 2 left. Um, that was the absolute worst time for us to try and check in. <laughs> There we go. Beautiful machine. So this is about right. Pitch about one degree. The the seven eight comes in hot. Comes in fast. I might disconnect from that soon. I don't want to land on this controller without having checked in, but I can't start. I'm sorry to our colleagues who flew along, but we know our easy to get colleague land in front of us, and there's someone coming in behind us. I'm just going to disconnect. Oh, I'll leave it. I'll leave it. Then we might have the nice. We might get told off. <laughs> so this three-degree line should sit on the threshold. This uh, three-degree line should sit just. In fact, I say threshold. Just past the threshold at the start of the touchdown zone. It should effectively almost line up with the pappies if they're in the standard position. If that's there, and then your flight path vector is on it as well, then you're doing three degrees, and you're in the right place. You can see here it's reacting to the wind. It's a bit of a breezy, 11 knots isn't too bad actually. But yeah, we have our accelerometer, so you can see we're increasing in speed quite rapidly. And now we're going to reduce. We're in declutter mode, so we get the runway outline. As I said earlier, I don't like that being separate. Anyway, autopilot off. It goes into flight director mode. Rudder's going to be on the right. A little into wind aid on the left. Can't actually hear the rad out through all the air traffic, so. <laughs> Uh, thrust levers will automatically close on us. 30, flare, rudder, aileron. There's touchdown. You see that nose gear just drop on you, and we'll get the reverse idle out. Ah, uh, my. My yoke, oh my yoke, my um, my reverses just won't come out because I haven't got the uh, the right hardware for it, sadly. But anyway, there we go. Let's take over from the brakes, manual brakes, and you'll see here on the decelerometer, I can press all the way through past max, and that's that'll be pretty serious. You'd really feel that. And now we're going to vacate right here. And welcome to Palmer. A little bit of power to get off the runway. And that disconnects the auto brakes. They go into the they should go into the disarm position actually. They'd sit there. And then you turn them off later. But there we go. Fantastic. Yeah, not able to get a word over their traffic there. The centre line went funny there, I know. It seemed to be um weirdly drifting. I was expecting it to wear the cock to the left, it was trying to wear the cock to the right. I'm not quite sure, but uh, yeah, trying. I was desperately trying to get on the reverses there and I couldn't get them to work, so <laughs> that uh, led to that rather ugly rollout. But still, I think the technique for the landing worked. Actually, I'm just going to park in this terminal here. Our reject colleague has headed out there. I'm going to park just nearest because it's. Uh, a little bit silly. We can't get a word in with their traffic. I thought I had some nice scenery for Palmer, but obviously I've uninstalled it. There's a two-year airplane. Nice. Our competitor in this circumstance. I'm going to leave the flaps out so that we have a nice uh, nicely configured airplane for the replay. I'm going to disconnect from VATSIM because, yeah, that's not working out for us tonight. Thank you to those flying along, though. I hope you enjoyed it. It's, uh, it's always great to have some traffic around us. It's really running away. Right. That's why, so it didn't idle them. It took them back up to 20. That's what was going on there. This is a conflict between my hardware and the uh, the sim. Interesting. I'm going to have to work on that one. 
have a plan for that. Yeah, that was interesting because it was just running away, which it shouldn't normally do. It does slowly accelerate, but there we go. Uh, so the auto throttle should drive the engines to idle and then disconnect. But what it did there was it drove it back to where my hard thrust levers were and then just left them there. <laughs> Hence uh, a little bit of a float on the landing and also that leads to the um, slightly slower deceleration than normal. And it meant I couldn't get the reverses out. But there we go. We made it. Welcome to Palmer. I really enjoyed that. I hope you did beautiful airplane thank you paddy for the fantastic livery i'm so glad to see it brought to life uh, on the, the 7a i think it works really really well and we do of course have a replay so for those of you leaving now thank you for watching do please leave a like on the way out if you enjoyed it really really appreciate it um and we will now get to enjoy the replay vantage thank you so much for your one dollar tip really appreciate it vantage says i know it's not much but thoughts i'd drop in a donation as you helped me so much with the 787 tutorial vantage that's really kind really appreciate it i'm glad that the tutorials were useful for you the descent and landing one coming very soon um, so yeah, thank you so much. Thank you to those new subscribers who joined us throughout the, uh, the stream today. So let's just put the airplane back on final and have a look. It's going to recycle the gear. It always does this. Landing gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. Landing gear. You see how the wings bend as I move it through the air. It, it's very strange how the dynamics of the uh, the sim work. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for coming along. Thanks, Dougal. Glad you enjoyed it. Right, let's have a look. So, yeah. I used right rudder and left aileron. It wasn't much drift. I perhaps overdid the drift correction. In my head, it was windier. <laughs> In the flare. Yeah, a little bit too much. But it was all going fine here. You can actually see my interwind aileron. But I don't know what happens there. Very strange. It just tries to drive off that way. But still. Love the 787 in the flare. It's such a responsive airplane. It's very, it, like I, I've said this before, but the fact it comes in at just one degree nose pitch, you've got such large amounts of air going over the wing at such decent speed that it just just responds. It's just so alive in the flare. You, you really are still flying. You're not just sort of managing the, the, the loss of energy. And you get away with things like that which I really like, yeah. Except for that. <laughs> Love the wings bending up and down at the edge. <laughs> Still. I don't think I have much else to say about it. 18,000 feet a minute in the sense. There you go. It's, uh, yeah. And we talked about the, um, the HUD and we talked about the engines not actually going to idle, which is what tripped us up a bit there. I think it's time for the... Uh, the end really I'll put it back on final by the way I can't stress enough Microsoft Flight Simulator this view out the window is spot on for flying into Palmer it captures the feel of it this HUD is spot on it's got so much detail it works just like the real HUD I'm so impressed with it as ever same with this and now the handling the Kuro have done a great job that pitch and the handling of this Kuro on landing are super um, the only thing is that yaw, the, the, the strength of the yaw, again, it, it's, it's as ever with Microsoft Flight makes it too strong. Uh, our boys are starting a type rating next month on the 787. Tapped into the very evolved world of flight sim since many moons ago. What a great channel, very useful. Is there a difference between Kuro and Horizon? Kuro is the 788, Horizon 789. And I, I really like the Kuro landing, but I don't know if they've modified that or not. I need to experiment with the Horizon a bit more. Um, the Horizon I found seems to come in a little bit pitch low, I think, but... We'll see. But they're both very good. Excellent freeware projects that give you the... They just bring the default one to life with the extra details, the, the, the texturing, and then it's fun having the shorter, longer version. I think they're both they're both super. And, of course, the Asobo 7.8, I think, is great at this stage. I've said that a lot, but, uh, yeah. Right, I'm going to let you all go. Thank you so much for coming along and watching and for the incredible, uh, incredibly fun chats we've been having. Really, really enjoyed it. Uh, it's been a real treat. I promise we'll fly into somewhere different next time. We'll do a, we'll do a more exciting approach. I've been I've been a bit lazy. Um, I'm sorry the streams have been so far apart. I have got like I say at least two videos coming soon, uh, and then we'll get streaming again soon. I've got a bit more time finally coming up. It's been very 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 unbelievably busy actually, but I have been able to make the videos because of course I have my laptop. So that's been fantastic. But yeah, thank you for your patience. Thank you for coming along today. We'll see you again in another video or live stream. Keep safe and well. Thank you to the moderators. Sorry, I must say thank you. 
um, to the moderators for looking after us, for everyone for chatting, for everyone for watching, for everyone for leaving a like, and of course, those who very kindly left uh, super chats and tips. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks for your support. We'll see you all again soon. Keep safe and well. Bye-bye.